Welcome in, Gov fans. Robbie Lotz here with Stan Painter as we are set for a non-region game at Saudi Daisy. We made the trip down here just outside Chattanooga, Stan, and uh, a little different than the last time we were here. It's been about uh, 15 years since we've been here. Yeah, actually 16 since here, I think, Robbie. 15 since we played them, so. Um, but, uh, you know, it's. It used uh, to be a region game. It did. We, I think about eight straight years we were in the same region, and then uh, uh, things got moved around. They've dropped down classes since then, so. All right. All right. Stan, All right. Uh, looks like Carter's got the head ball coach, Robert Reeves. Carter, take it away. All right, had a little trouble with the mic, but like he said, Stan, the, re the record doesn't dictate how good this team really is. They are just a 4A team, but a um, couple wins on the season against Udawa and Saudi Daisy, but yeah. uh, two six losses. Yeah, certainly. So, you know, anytime you come on the road this far, Robbie, it's, it's tough to play. and um, So we'll just have to see, you know, how, how things are uh, – are for William Blunt, you know, as, as Coach Reese said, things a little out of um, kilter for them today. And yep. um, no so school, we'll, yep. we'll just see how they, they react to it. So certainly a, a, it's a non-region game. So, but, but it is it is an important game yeah. for the overall record as there's some, there, there are some scenarios where William Blunt can still get in the playoffs. Uh, this is your Heartland Roofing pregame report from Saudi Daisy High School. A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau and a five-star rating on Google. Give Nate a call at 865-323-5933. With that, we'll take our first two-minute break of this pregame. Back here at Saudi Daisy High School as the Govs bring their 5-3 and three record on the road. And as Carter was talking to Coach Reeves about there in that interview, it may not have came through the airways, but he was talking about uh, the Govs trying to get their sixth win 
of the campaign, and it'll be the first time since 2007, Carter. Yeah, uh, also the uh, first one south of the Okoe since 2007, so pretty big game uh, for the Govs. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be good to see if they could get it done because, you know, big program builder for next year. Yeah, for sure. We'll move into the area update. As always, it's brought to you by Realty Resource. And uh, the region standings, nobody's got a region game tonight as there's three games that will dictate the playoff scenarios next week as sitting at top of the region is Jefferson County at 4-0. They're locked into the one seed as they, they beat both the second and third place teams head-to-head, uh, -head, so they cannot, even if they lost to William Blunt next week, they cannot drop out of the one seed. Second place on the line next week will be Dobbins Bennett and um, Science Hill as they're both sitting at three and one. And they have their, like they always do, they play week 10, that big rivalry game for those two teams. And then William Blunt, of course, they're tied right now with Westridge at one and three. And then Morristown East brings up the rear at 0 oh and four. So with all of that, where the playoff implications stand is Westridge controls their own destiny as they they win next week against the last place Morristown East team, which we expect them to do. They'll make their way into the playoffs. But if they do somehow lose to Morristown East, William Blunt will sneak in there, Stan. Yeah, but the game next based week. On, you know, based on a three-way tie and a head-to-head -head tie, uh, the overall record. Right, of the three teams, which they all would have beat each other. So, really, what you're telling me, Robbie, is next week game means nothing for Right, and even if we won or lost, it doesn't mean, even if we upset Jeff County, we don't get in. That does not mean we get in because Westridge controls their own destiny, and if they win, they've, locked, they've got the head-to-head. -head right. Over we, we have to get in a three-way tie with Morristown in there to, to, for us to advance, so... Um, so we have to be a real big choose, or, um, fans of the, the <laughs> yeah, hurricane. We're, right? we're pulling. And Westridge showed, uh, like, we heard they had some injuries, and they uh, lost last night, right, Stan? Yeah, they to lost to five, another 5 a Yeah, Tennessee High beat them last night. So, so maybe but, there is some hope. Don't give up on this Gov's chance. They needed the same thing in 2019 when they needed, uh, was it Cleveland to beat uh, – Udwa, I can't remember, was it Udawal? I think it was Udawal. Right, we needed Cleveland yeah. to beat Udawal or Udawal. Either way, it came down to the last week, and they did it, and it got William Blunt into the playoffs in 2019. So don't give up hope quite yet. Some other scores that we'll be watching tonight is they've already kicked off uh, at Alcoa about 10 minutes ago. The Marvel Rebels in Alcoa, one of the longest rivalries in the South, taking – action tonight. Stan, yeah, I think Alcoa's got a little bit of momentum and uh, they're the favorite in that game for this year. They are, Robbie, but, you know, there's a lot of strange things have happened in that series. There's been times when Alcoa has been favored and Maryville's ended up finding out, figuring out ways to win, so. Um, and as we were driving up here, we heard Ledoux was in warm-ups. Yeah, so he would definitely make a big difference in that game. I'm not sure they would play him. Yeah, I'm not yeah, sure either, with the, knowing next what's on the line for next week. But although I think, looking at the scenarios, Robbie, I think Maryville's in. Yeah, we, um, we were trying to go over. More than likely they're going to win anyways, but we're going to say that Maryville is probably locked in the three spot. And so um, they will be looking going to Upper East Tennessee to play DB or Science Hill. And they've got a good chance to win that first-round game if they, you know. Yeah, um, they get so, healthy. So uh, regardless. Uh, well, they've already played Science Hill. Yes. And uh, – so either way, Robbie, but going back, um, as you said, uh, you know, I, that game could go. It would not surprise me if Maryville won the game. I do think Alcoa has probably got the better team. Um, but if you look at some common foes, Bearden, they both played both Bearden. Very tight. Tight. I bet Maryville lost. West. West. Alcoa, of course, Alcoa dominated. Yeah, Alcoa did dominate West. Maryville lost to West. So That's where you make Maryville a slight underdog yeah. tonight. Although they do win, I think, somewhere around 75, 80% of those games against Alcoa in the history of the rivalry. Other game in uh, that region is Bradley Central at Cleveland. You got to think that's a rivalry down here yeah. in this area, Stan. And Cleveland pretty much needs to win out to have a chance. 
Uh, well, actually, no, they're probably going to get in, right? Uh, they might be able to get the four seed if, right. if uh, unless Farragut were to upset Maryville next week. Th next week, and that would throw in a kink into that right there. But, yeah. um, you know, it looks like Hardin Valley is going to be the odd man out over there and then possibly Farragut unless, unless. Um, Farragut's going to get a win tonight as they're at Hardin yeah. Valley. But, but Farragut is two and what did you say, Stan? Two, two and six. six. They won the first two games, but they've had some. And they won those in the last seconds. They've had but, really tough luck. Some, you know, they played Bearden close, I know. Um, I can't remember who else they played over there. Robbie, they played, uh, I think the Bradley game was pretty Powell. close. Powell. Powell. They played Bradley close. So they've just yeah. had some tough luck games over there. feel like they probably let the Cleveland game get away from them. That should have been a win for them. That's, so that's why they're kind of they're back against the wall. But we'll see what happens over there tonight. As and like you said, I think they will pick up a win against Hardin Valley tonight, and so that will that will make that Maryville game meaningful next week. Yes, it will. Uh, Maryville Farragut. Uh, other games that uh, we go down to the five A docket. You got Halls at West tonight, as Halls has one loss. West has not got a loss yet in that region. And if they win tonight, you got to think it'll be setting up a West and Powell right. region championship next week. Yep, and I'd, I'd say that's probably what's going to happen. Halls, if they lose tonight, they're going to drop to the three, three. seed. Yep. Central's already got the four seed locked. Last night is Heritage Falls 41-33, and Heritage will finish out of the playoffs for the second consecutive, well, two years under Joe Ozevet. And then Lenore City at... Oak Ridge, that's for first place, Stan, believe it or not. Yeah, over, both those teams are undefeated in over, their region. In region five, uh, region three, five A, right? So uh, that should be, I think, an Oak Ridge win. I um, think Oak Ridge will I'm win gonna, that one. Yeah, way. for first, and there's a big difference between first and second place in that region. And here's a team, local team, uh, looking to win and get in the playoffs, Stan, Eagleton. In year one, they're a varsity action. They're at Cosby. No, no, they're, they're at home hosting Cosby. They win and they're in. I don't think tonight. I think next week, Cumberland Gap game is. is I'm sorry. Yeah. You're right. That's yeah. the game I'm confused. Yeah. 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 Cumberland Gap is next week, which yeah. they should win that game. Yes. And so I think they are going to get the four seed. Now, unfortunately for them, they're probably going to York. That's a long trip. Yeah. And that's probably going to be a, a long trip home, too, because York is pretty good. So, um, <laughs> uh, but, but regardless, it would be good for them to get in the playoff, at least, you know, their first year in varsity experience. So. Um, and other, we'll finish up this segment real quick here. Uh, other games that we'll be keeping up with on the Gov Nation scoreboard. Dobbins Bennett at Crockett, Campbell County at Austin East, Gibbs at Anderson County, Morristown West at Bearden. Uh, the Campbell County's at Morristown East. Actually. I'm sorry, yeah. Moist. And, uh, oh, I put A-E, yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's uh, M-E. And, of course, our next week opponent, Jeff County in Cock County. Jeff County's already up 7 nothing on Cock County, so Expected. no surprise there. Yep. Yep. And once again, we want to thank Realty Resource all season, being our area update sponsor, them and Young Life. They'll do it. Uh, we appreciate their sponsorship. Give them a call at 865-584-9099. We'll take another two-minute break, come back with some stats from this season. We got an intriguing uh, scenario if we can put some points up tonight. We'll take a two-minute break.
right, welcome back to the Heartland Roofing pregame show here from Saudi Daisy High School as the Govs have got a non-region opponent tonight in the Saudi Daisy Trojans. If you look onto the field, it looks like they're about to set up for their um, pregame playing with our marching band. Stats will stand tonight, brought to you by Red Tech. For the best refrigerant in the business for LG appliances, give them a call, 983-1633. Stan, uh, Tyler sent us a fun stat this afternoon, talking about the scoring. Yeah. And William Blunt, 47 points away from breaking the school record. Wow. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? I think we're getting ready to go to, go to yeah. the national anthem right yeah, here, yeah. Robbie. Okay, we're going to send it down to the field and do a, the national anthem. All right, that was the national anthem presented by the marching band here, Saudi Daisy, home of the Trojans. Stan, so those, we were talking about the stats. William Blunt, 47 points away, and amazing, because last year we averaged 9.9 <laughs> points per game. This year has just been a tale of two different teams. Yeah, we're averaging, what, that? Probably a quarter, aren't we, as we go into this. and uh, So... Uh, you know, it's just, Robbie, I look at all the stats down down the, the sheet, and William Blunt has pretty much dominated in every category, pretty much, other than the fact that we've thrown more interceptions. Um, you know, other than that, that's that's uh, pretty much the only stat that we don't lead our team, you know, that we don't lead in and so forth. And that's, that's one you don't want to lead in, actually. But, um, you know, you look at it, William Blunt's rushed for almost 2,000 yards, Robbie, in eight games. And we've thrown for 1,600 almost in eight games. So, um, you know, we didn't have a 100-yard game, I don't think, last year rushing, did we? No. Uh, all year. So uh, and we had that the first week. Yeah. And so uh, where our opponents have only rushed for 1,200 yards and only thrown for 1,200 yards. So we've got like a 1,100-yard 1, 1, difference. Just, yeah, in, in total yardage for this year. Of course, going down through there, Robbie, we've not punted nearly as much. Our opponents have uh, punted 15 times more than we have. 
Um, we've been uh, average upon average. Uh, Brett's right at 42.9. Compared. The penalties, the penalties, remember and, early in the year, the yeah. penalties were a problem. But they really cleaned that up the last, right. last couple of games. The yardage is about the same, but we've been penalized 15 times less than our opponents. So about two, you average, figure that about two, two, two less penalties. But as you said, Robbie, that, that turned around the week about week five, I think, when we started seeing less penalties. So. All right. So, so uh, with that, we're going to end the stat segment. Stan, I'm, before we go to commercial break here, I'm going to do – a first to burst, we did it, and it was uh, Sam Schultz's mother won the last contest, so she's ineligible. Tonight, I want people's picks on first to burst. Text in your guest tonight. Here's your options. Brett Cortez, Aiden Klein, Darius Brooks, Jackson Dabrowski, Gavin Dabrowski, or the field. It will win a Chick-fil-A combo uh, sandwich and... A William Blunt governor's hat from the athletic department. So text in 865-200-1926 with your guest of first to burst tonight. Stan's going with Cortez, and Brad is going with the field. I'm going with Jackson Dabrowski. Carter? I'll go with Gavin. You're going with Gavin. And that leaves Richard. He's going to take Darius. And Scott Cup will have to take Aiden Klein. So we'll take a two-minute break, come back with uh, Robert Reeves' keys to the night's victory with about seven minutes before kickoff. We'll take a two-minute break. All right, we're back here at Soddy Daisy High School as we're about five minutes before kickoff as the Trojans have made their way down to their tunnel, a little air thing. And here they come onto the field with the smoke. And the Trojans come through. I like their look, that navy and navy with the gold hum yeah. helmets. Oh, yeah. That's a good look for the Trojans. Uh, I also like their USC fight song they play too, yeah. the Trojans. The PA just gave us a WWE uh, <laughs> reference as he brought them out onto the field. Stan, uh, this is Robert Reeves' reads to winning tonight. Reestablish the purity in the kicking game. You know, we struggled a little bit early with that kicking game last week. Um, gave up a punt ret or kick return touchdown. Um, and really that cost us, you know, a lot. That game that kind of opened up where we were right there yeah. with them most of the game. So that's one of the keys. Robert Reeves reads. These are brought to you by Two Fold Mold. Give Travis a call at 617 0708. Number two, convert in the orange zone. You know, you got to score when you get inside the 20. And that's 
that's uh, the Print FX Orange Zone, and that should be points every time. Last week, we stalled out twice, and just can't have that when you're playing teams like Dobbins Bennett we were last week. Number three, create turnovers. Stan, we were looking at it in the stats. You said we've had – we've got four interceptions on the season. We have intercepted four passes. And I think we've recovered three fumbles. So that's seven. That's about one a game. Who wants to get that number probably the two to three and we'll, uh, be able to open this game up tonight. Once again, those are Robert Reeves, Reeds, and our keys to winning tonight as the Govs tonight will be in their road white uniforms with navy pants, white helmets, and they're about to bust through the banner as the captains are out there tonight. Cortez with Sellers, and I don't stand. My roster's over here. 47 is going to be Tristan Query. Your starters tonight on offense for the Governors. At quarterback, it'll be senior Brett Cortez. Tailback will be Aiden Klein. Wide receivers will be Clark Dabrowski. Dabrowski, tight end, will be Lipinski. On your offensive line, they're anchored by the senior Vincent Deal at center. Your left guard will be Michael Slusher. Left tackle, Luke Watkins back tonight, getting the start. Right guard, Caleb Hatcher. And right tackle, Nathan Flores. These are brought to you by Genera. They are hiring. Visit GeneraInc.com. The defense will be your starters on the defensive line. You will have Monroe, Eggleton, and Errett. Linebackers will be Brooks, Henson, Query, and Witherspoon. In the secondary will be Ethan Miller, Caden Donnelly, Major Crumpton, and Randy Reed. Looks like William Blunt won the toss and elected to receive the ball. So we will get to see the offense first. We'll take another 60-second break and come back with kickoff here from Saudi Daisy High School. Back here, set for the Anywhere Movers kickoff. Give Alvin a call at 865-235-4108. Stan, a little bit about this rivalry. William Blunt is 5-3 and three all time against Saudi Daisy. The last meeting was in 2008 at William Blunt. Saudi Daisy won 14-33. to 33. Um, Other than that, it's been uh, in our favor. Right. Yeah, it has certainly. First started bad and ended bad. Yes, so in 2001, won. they beat us 49-0 yeah. to start the rivalry. And then we've got five out of six wins in the middle. So hopefully we can get start back on the win streak again this year. And, of course, we'll, they'll come to us next year. Uh, get the number 45. Is that what we're getting? Is anybody uh, it looks like we're not gonna, really going to be able to tell until he turns his back tonight. Those numbers, gold numbers, are kind of hard yeah. to read. Yeah. Aren't they? Back to receive is they're up standing close as Reed and Dabrowski. It's Gavin Dabrowski and Reed at the 20. So 49, Callum Williams will be the kicker. Going to put his right foot into it here as we kick off at 731. And it's a low squibber going to be taken by Dabrowski at the 24. Goes to the left side. Finds a gap there, straight ahead in midfield. And right around the 46-yard line, he stumbles. And the Govs offense will take over there, first and 10. Yeah, good good field position for the Governors, Rob, Robbie, to get started here as a, kind of a squib kick and a pretty good return there by Gavin. If he doesn't fall, Robbie, he could go another 20, or maybe break that thing, but I think he kind of lost his balance a little bit. Got a tight formation here. Stewart at the top. Dabrowski here at the bottom, single set tailback will be Aiden Klein standing to the right of Cortez. 
Rolling to the right. Out pattern going to be incomplete through the hands of Garrett Clark. Yeah, it looked to be a little behind Clark there. Um, you really want to lead him there when he's rolling out to his right, but tough. Looks like the Trojans will have four down linemen. In motion is the governor. Here's Cortez on the option. Fakes it, goes ahead. Going to be tackled by the shoulder. Nice tackle there after a gain of two. Ooh, yeah. Can't see that number at all. I think 58 might have been the tackler. That's going to be Pete Laxton, a sophomore. Give two yards for Brett. It brings up third down and long with an 11-18 here as they get to the line of scrimmage and get a free five, five yards. Right there. Five-yard penalty on the hard count. And it'll bring up third and manageable. We'll call it third and three. Now, looking at this roster, guys, it looks like they've got a lot of underclassmen. Um, so, definitely something for Saudi to build on in the, few, in the coming years. Um, not a whole lot of guys leaving. Third down and three. Klein stands to the left of Cortez as he looks to Blake to get the call from Coach Clavo. Coach Clavo up in the box tonight. Sent, he said, send a shout out to Jessica, his girlfriend, and he misses her. <coughs> Here is a handoff to Klein. Straight ahead, first down yardage and more. And still on his feet inside the 35, down to the 31-yard line, the sophomore Aiden Klein. Yes. Hard running by Klein there, turning his legs, breaking tackles, and getting a big gain. Goes for 16 right there, Robbie, in our first first down of the game. Yep, first first down of the game. going to be brought to you by... Bowen door service, making your best first impression. Handoff again, straight ahead, getting positive yardage. And now pushing the pile. Well, they blew his momentum, stopped around the 27-yard line, giving four. Four right there, and that was Klein again. Yes. So Quickly to the line of scrimmage. Stacked receivers at the top and bottom. Cortez looks to the left, going to be caught by Nebrowski. This is Jackson. Getting short of the first down, I believe, by one yard. Yeah, maybe even a half yard. Yeah, about right at one, Robbie. So that'll be up a... Uh, Two yards from the Print FX orange zone. But one. it brings up third down and one. Good play call there by Coach Clavo. A lot of space on that left side. So we can get a power play right here with Klein. Klein will take it. Following blockers inside the 15 and down there. It'll be another... First down, Bowen door service, first down for the Governors as they're inside the Print FX Orange Zone now. See where they mark that at. Is that about the 14? First and 10 at the fifth, 14. Try to get them to jump, they won't. Clock rolls with 9.40 in the opening quarter. Opening drive for the Governors. Cortez flips it out to the left. Dabrowski straight ahead. And out of bounds. Might be a first down though, Stan. We'll see where he marks it. Maybe it's at the five. Yeah, it looks like they're going to mark it a little yeah, short. Nine yards on the yep. person. Give him nine. Here comes a power package for the Governors. I see Query coming in with Brooks. It's going to be Klein dotting the eye. Under centers Cortez. He'll take it. Hand off. Klein left side into the hole and first down, down. At the one. It is a first down. It'll be first and goal around the one. I think maybe the two. And it looks like they're going to mark it at the two. They're at the two. It's a Bowen door service first down and goal now for the Governors. They started this drive at the 46-yard line and have quickly moved into the goal line. Cortez will take the snap. Hand to Darius Brooks, and he's short. He's close. Now hey. he's in. Touchdown. Whoever texted in Darius Brooks will be in the running tonight, and I believe that was Richard Turner, our producer, with the first to burst correct pick tonight. Two yard scamper there for Brooks on second effort getting into the end zone for a red tech touchdown and the Govs lead six to nothing. And now Plemons on for the extra point. Really Good. like to see the power package there by Blunt. Didn't have it earlier in the season. Yeah, they finally had decided had to go under center and look, it works. Good snap, Brett gets it down on the block. The kick is up, the kick is good. It's seven rip. We'll take a 60 second break.
for the Anywhere Movers kickoff. Straight down the middle, high pooch kick down the left side, actually going to be taken at the 10. Running this way, getting knocked back to the 20 yard line was the Saudi Daisy returner. Yeah, good coverage over there, Robbie, good kick. Brad's going to have to give us numbers. 35. 35 on the return. That was Jacob Bowling. They pinned him over there on the sideline, Robbie, and he kind of ran wide back this way and blunt with a good coverage. Keeps him inside the 20 yard line, so. William Blunt started on their first possession at the 46. Saudi Daisy will start at the, their own 18. Handoff running left side. And getting past the 20 and out of bounds. Ooh, we might have hit him late. I guess you're going to say it wasn't uh, malicious enough to pull the yellow laundry. Seven yards on the carry. Number 12. Number 12. That's going to be Ross. So second down and, and three, Robbie. That's a pretty good run. A lot of running over there. They tried to run wide. Second down and three from the 25 for the crew. Straight ahead, power football, and bouncing it outside and getting a first down for the Trojans. Tough luck for William Blunt. Had him stuffed, maybe for a yard or two. Probably would have been a first down, but not nearly as big as it would have been. Okay. All right, first and 10 Trojans at the 35. So they get their first first down of the game. We get a number on the tailback there? I think it was 35 that carried it. Is 35? That... 30. It's 30. Gage Welch. Here he is, a run to the left. He's running wide. Can we get him there? We can for a tackle. Maybe a lost one by the time we get us. They're going to say inbounds. Uh, really good that job there. That was going to be York. Corbin York, number four on the carry. Really good job there by William Blunt, pushing pushing him to the boundary and getting guys over there. Loss of one, the clock continues to roll. 7.55 and counting, first quarter. Robbie, does it seem a little dark to you? Uh, yeah, the light, there's only two sets of lights. Yeah. Maybe that's the difference. There's a Fumble. low snap on the ground. Dodd recovers it, and he's going to go down for a red tech sack, gang sack there by the governors. We'll About five of them there. I think Randy Reed's at the bottom of that pile. He's going to lose, I think, three, Stan. Just maybe two. Two, 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 two more. And that two. was. That was yeah, Dodd, the quarterback, yeah. got back on top of it. Luke Dodd, a sophomore quarterback here for the Trojans. Third down and 13. Two receivers at the top of your screen. Pistol formation for Dodd. He'll take it. Play action. Rolling to his right. And dumped into the flats. He's got a man there. It's going to be caught. And getting close to the first down. Short. I think he's a yard short. Maybe two. That could be four down territory here for Saudi Daisy. We'll see if they go for it. Let's see what Cardwell does here. He's got the first decision. Yeah. They're going to go for it. Fourth and two. Down marker says first. But they... Good play call there by see if Saudi. Will, they're going to see if maybe William Lunt will jump. And then they may really got 13 on the play clock. Got to hold your water. They don't jump. Five, four, three. They may call a timeout. They will. Carl calls timeout. This timeout will be brought to you by Barner Burger, the home of the two for nine dollar quarter pounder with cheese. We'll take a 60 second break.
Looks like Saudi Daisy has decided they are going to go for it here on fourth and two. Blunt showing blitz. Rolling to his left is Dodd. Can he turn it? Out pattern caught. Got First it. down yardage for the Trojans. That's number 19. Yep, 19 on the reception. That's going to be Coulter Jackson, the junior. Uh, good play design there by Saudi. Rolling him out to the left and just a quick curl route. Needed two, got three. Their second first down for the Trojans in the first quarter. William Lutt does lead the game seven to nothing. They're moving right to left here on AM 1470 and on the Gov Nation Network. Pistol formation again for Dodd. He'll take it straight ahead, false start, I believe. No, offsides. Neutral zone on William Blunt. It'll be a free five yards for the Trojans. A little too quick off the ball there. So William Blunt's first penalty of the game. Each team been penalized five yards. Both Bring up first and five for the Trojans. I didn't see that, Stan. I, I was looking down and uh, to catch my stats up, so I didn't either. Somebody might have lined, just lined up too close to the ball. First and five. Now Trojans into William Blunt territory at the 49. The 12 is the fullback, Ross. Dodd looking to his left. Straight go pattern out of bounds. No, it wasn't out of bounds. It was just overthrown by everybody. Yeah. He overthrew everybody. As William. Donnelly was on an island over there, might have got away with a hole. Yeah, he did. Yeah, the, the Saudi faithful not happy with the no call. Could have actually been pass interference, yeah. too, because it was in the air. So he kind of impeded his progress down the sideline. So I'm not sure he'd have caught the ball anyway, but that's not a... a That's not something you can do in high school, Robbie. Is it doesn't matter if it's catchable or not. Second down and four. Second down and five. Dodd in the pistol. Takes it. Handoff running left. Turning the corner. Getting first down yardage, I believe. Yes, he will at the 42. Well, he's still walking. I think he's down to the 42, Stan. Third first down of this opening drive for the Trojans. So seven yards right there. That wasn't nothing fancy. That was no. just almost like an old student body left. left. Now they are the Trojans, so that's what USC used to run back in the day. Did you get a number on the runner there? It was number 30. 30 again. Welch. He's still in there. That tailback. Dodd in the pistol. Takes it. Play action. Rolling to his right. He will throw it in the out pattern. Going to be caught, I believe, by number nine. Yep. I believe that's going to be another first down, 11 yards. Just picking us apart right there. Number nine is Keegan Hickman, junior wide receiver, getting his first catch of the game. Well, it looks like on that rollout, Dodd really has two reads. He's got the flat underneath with the, the fullback, or He's got the guy on the further out, so. And he picked the better of the two reads. Yeah. Blunt had the, the underneath covered. A lot of guys at the line of scrimmage. Handoff up the middle as Welch. Going to get good yardage, maybe three or four. Wow, he just. Four. The referee just moved a yard ahead. Yeah, he gave him four on it, Robbie. That's the first kind of, that's, that's the first. He, that's end. where he finished after he got done rolling. <laughs> Really the first inside run they've ran, I believe. Second down and six. Second down and six. Saudi with a really systematic drive down the field here. Yeah, they inside, taken, outside, and short throws. Yeah, taking some time off the clock, doing what they need to do. Yeah, we're almost approaching the under four we're under four minutes and each team's just had one possession. See if they go to the right this time. Nope, straight ahead. Tailback breaking tacklers. Welch He's getting positive time, yardage. It's close. Bring up third down and two. Query on the tackle there for the governors. Not sure if Saudi has a has a reliable kicker, so looking like this might be four down territory if they don't get it here. Yeah, I would say. I'm sure they the are. They, the way they've moved the ball. Yeah. As we'll be under three minutes when this play gets over with in the first quarter. 
William Blunt does lead seven to nothing, but Saudi trying to strike on their first drive. Third down and two from the 23. Dodd, handoff, rolling right. William Blunt's got a chance in the backfield, can't make the tackle, and now getting the first down as Darius couldn't make the tackle. And it'll be a first down carry. Four well, uh, actually that was, was that Ross? 12? 30 again, Welch. First and 10 for the Trojans at the William Lutt 19. So Welch is the workhorse in the offense. Two receivers left, tied in on the right. Got a fullback, stands to the left of the pistol. That's Ross. And it's a handoff to Welch, gonna be tackled from behind. Maybe just a yard that time, Robbie, so. One or two. Guys, I can really see why the highest point total for Saudi Daisy so far this year has been 28. They're just driving the ball downfield, chewing a lot of clock. You're not gonna score a whole lot of points doing that. Yeah, and their pass patterns are kind of short, so far been kind of short, but they've been accurate. Give him one yard, it'll bring up second and nine. Blitz coming for William Blunt. Dodd takes it, handoff right, we're oh, in the backfield, we missed the tackle again. Eggleton's gotta make that tackle. Similar to the play last week he had on fourth down and two, that we missed the Dobbins Bennett quarterback on. York the carrier on this one. Yeah. Well that gets a... We're down to a minute 30 in the first quarter. Brings up third and long right here, Robbie. Third and about seven. So, uh, as you said, I think they'll be in two down territory. And the pistol's Dodd. He'll take the snap, roll into his left, and gets oh, through tackle some tacklers. Again. Not, Not for that one. one. It's going to be no gain. Got back to the line. Here comes your Heartland Roofing replay. Number 60 for William Blunt. And he got popped. That's Nathan Hammered Flores. Him. He's playing both in. ways tonight as the senior. We haven't had a lot of guys playing both ways this year, but. I believe they are going to kick. They're going to kick a field goal. It'll be a 33 Three yard yarder. From the middle of the field. Yeah, can't line it up much better. So this if he's got Williams. the legs. Williams, he'll kick it. The snap is a great one. The kick is up. The kick looks good. Oh, he boomed it. No, no good, missed though. It. Pulled it left, I believe. Must have missed it left. William Blunt will get the ball at the 20-yard line after the change of possession as the 33-yard field goal is no good. He bombed the kick, though. Just must have went left. Yeah, yeah I'm going to take... Kid over here called it. I'm going to take back my statement of uh, them <laughs> not having a kicker with a leg. It's like William Blunt will come out with two receivers to the right, one to the left with Klein, actually now they'll run Dobrowski, so two left, two right, actually gonna be uh, Landon, Landon Rich in the slot. Looking that way towards Stewart. Stewart catches it at, up past the 30 and hit out of bounds around the 32 yard line, first down yardage. First quarter first downs are brought to you by Bowen Door Service. And with 18.3 left in the quarter, they'll stop the clock move the box and reset the chains. Handoff Klein up the middle, not much there, but he knows, stays on his feet for about five. That will do the quarter. And unless William Blunt runs a really quick play, which I don't think they will, Coach Claybo will take this offense to the second quarter. William Blunt leads seven to nothing, and we'll take a 60 second break here on the Gov Nation Network.
second down, and we'll call it four as Klein got six. Now, and again, not much this time. He'll get one or two, giving one down to the, up to the 39, bring up third down and short. Stand score from Alcoa, it's 14 to 14. Maribel had a lead, and Gage Ledoux, after the broken leg, is back for the Maribel Rebels, just in time for the playoffs. Nine weeks later. And a free five yards as William Blunt's Cortez with a big head bob gets the offsides encroachment penalty. And a second quarter first down on this drive brought to you by Blunt Partnership where careers and education come together. 11.34 to go, William Blunt leading seven to nothing. Now moving right to left here on the Voice of Champions AM 1470. Cortez will take it, straight drop. Looking to his right, now left, across the middle, oh, got wide Stewart. Open. It's gonna be a touchdown, Hunter Stewart. 56 yards, touchdown, Governors. That's a red tech touchdown, as went right down the seam, did oh. the senior wide receiver. For some reason, it's showing the opening kickoff on our replay. <laughs> um, yeah. Ignore that one. As we'll try to get that replay. What a, what a, what a, he just put it on him right there. Good throw there yeah. by Brett. His 31st stand touchdown of the year. Yes. Extra point from Plymouth. 18th through the air. Snap by Henson. The clock, ball did not get down. And no, no good. good as Brett barely got it on the block. And I believe that might be his first missed extra point this year that didn't get blocked. With, nonetheless, William Blunt leads 13 to nothing with 11-16 to go here in the second quarter. We'll take a 60-second break. You want me to try it, Richard? All right, we're back here. Here's your Heartland Roofing replay on that touchdown. Cortez stands tall in the pocket. Just a beautiful ball on time. And then Stewart just puts on the afterburners for the rest of it. And putting the guzz up 13 to nothing. The extra point was no good. Eagleton leads Cosby 7 to nothing. And we mentioned Jeff County 42 nothing over in the second quarter over Cock County. Anderson County, 21-0 over Gibbs. That's surprising. Bearden, 10-0. There's a short kick going to be fielded nicely by the Trojans. They'll have good field position at the 39-yard line. And, R Robbie, I got a halftime score. Oak Ridge, 7, Lenore City, 6. Oh, wow. We counted the uh, Panthers out early. Yep. So, Oak Ridge, who dominated uh, Farragut just a couple weeks ago, then lost to Bearden, only leads by one over Lenore City, who... Who did Lenore City get beat by last week, Stan? I know they've lost to. I know they're, they're uh, Will, I think Will, it was, uh, Will Hunt was out or something. Uh huh. And they lost a game that was a little bit surprising. Let's see here. I'll pull it up. Welch in the top of the pistol here. It's a play action. Dodd looking to his left. Wide, man wide open. open. Toasted. And down inside the 30-yard line. It's going to be a nice play. Good recovery there by Taco. But he got burnt there on the play action fake. Eyes in the backfield. <laughs> Can't get that number over there, Robbie. Uh it's probably 19, 19, Stan. That is Coulter Jackson again. Went for 32 yards. Oh, it was Heritage beat on 35-0 last oh, yeah, week. Oh, yeah, that's right. 
Couldn't remember who beat Lenore City that bad, but yeah. Well, that's crazy to think Heritage can beat that team that's competing for that uh, region. His oh, turn in the corner. It's Welch inside the He's going to be coming back, guys. We've got a hold outside here. That's why it was so wide open, I guess. Bring it back to the – be a 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. So back to the 38 yard line, it'll bring up first and 20. As that ball, he was he carried that inside the five yard line. We'll see the replay here. As, right yep, there, you see yeah. him right there. He grabbed him, grabbed Eggleton right on the shoulder pad. Good call by the ref. Yeah, just enough to keep him from having the possibility to make a play there. But I really don't know if he's going to stretch that far to make that. I no. mean, he may have, but probably a block that the Trojans didn't need. First and 20 now puts him behind the chains. Two receivers left. Got a tight end down here at the bottom. Dodd in the pistol, takes it, handoff up the middle, big oh, hole. Big hole. And he's my score here, off to the 30, down to 20, 15, 10, and inside the 10, out of bounds at the 7. It'll be first and goal with a straight-ahead run there by the Trojans. They found something in the power run game. Yeah, not sure what Crumpton was doing there on the outside. It looks like he was just kind of face-guarding him as he ran past him. Welch, Robbie, already 60 yards on the ground on seven carries. So he's their workhorse. Coulter will be at the top of the screen. In the slot, I believe, is going to be number nine is Hickman. Saudi with 15 on the play clock, or five on the play clock, is going to have to call timeout as they weren't, didn't have the personnel set. This is their second timeout of the first half. It's brought to you by Trinity Chiropractor, where you get your life forces switched on with Dr. Evan Butcher. We'll take a 30-second break. Expect nothing more than power foot here, football here by the Trojans as well. No, it's a play action. He got a wide, wide open receiver. Open. William Bluss there at the one, but he bulldozes over. It's going to be a touchdown as Ross, Tucker Ross, will get the seven yard touchdown reception here with 9.51 in the second quarter. Saudi Daisy's first score of the game makes the score now 13 to 6 with the extra point. Pending. Snap down the kick up, kick is high and good. It's now 13 to 7. We'll take a 60 second break, come back with second quarter action here from Saudi Daisy High School.
Back at South Saudi Daisy High School, Robbie. Just in time for the kickoff. Dabrowski catches it, gets up to the 25. And that's it for Gavin. And that's where William Long will start this drive. This will be worst. Nope, this will be either second time starting inside the 25. Another pick there by the Tornadoes, I heard. And Maryville's got the ball just before half. And now Alcoa picks them off at the buzzer. I think it's going to be 14-14 halftime over at Alcoa. Here's a handoff for Klein straight ahead, getting three or four. Bring up second down and seven. William Blunt's two for two on scoring drive. Saudi Daisy, one out of two. They missed a 33-yard field goal on their first drive. Other than that, they've been able to move the ball up and down the field. Both teams have. Second down and seven. Here's a Cortez keeper. Big hole, left side. Needs a block from Stewart. Doesn't get it, but he does get the first down yardage up past the 46-yard line. Here's your Heartland Roofing replay. Is Brett just finding a hole? Needed one little block there. Well, I think, he, I think he should have waited just a little bit for it, Robbie. Uh, it's a blunt partnership. First down for the Governors up past the 45. I agree, 9 one left in the second quarter. Handoff, Klein running right. No, he bounced it wide. Now he hits it up and gets positive yardage, giving four up to midfield. It'll be second and six. I thought he might have needed to cut that up a little sooner, but you're not going to complain with four yards, guys. No. Yeah, it looked like he probably would have got four either way he went. But good vision there by the sophomore tailback. Oh, yeah. Second down and six. Cortez will run the option. Now keep it straight ahead and get. That's going to be tag. a. Drackler got something. Got a play. They're going to call a horse collar here. No, it's up there on the sideline. Yeah. Uh oh. It's around. Uh, it may it's be a hold on us. Face mask. Face, face mask. Okay. okay. Must have grabbed Dabrowski's face mask while he was blocking up at the top. I don't know. It'll be a first down on the run and then another first down on the penalty. Oops. Back-to-back so -back first downs for William Blunt. And those are our Blunt partnership first downs. And now we're inside the 30-yard line, getting close to the Print FX Orange Zone at the 27-yard line, first and 10, 8-13 left here in the half. Cortez freezes, nobody jumps. Now he'll check to St. Clair to get the call. First, I don't know if I mentioned it, Coach Clavo's in the box tonight. Last week he started in the box and then moved down. He told me he'd be up here all night. Well, that's good. I like him better up here. I think he can uh, feel the game better from up here. In motion is Klein out of the backfield. Cortez will look across the middle. Now he chucks the end zone. Oh, he's got a man in the corner. Maybe overthrow it. Too far. It is ah, too far. Ah, man. Just a bit outside his reach as, as Cortez threw that one too far on first and 10. Here's your Heartland Roofing replay. All his momentum is carrying there. It's hard to. Yep, right yep. foot came down out of bounds. Bring T up second down and 10. Tough luck on a pretty good throw. Just about a yard too far. In motion is Dabrowski. Handoff, a straight ahead, Clyde fumbles. fumbles. Now Cortez fumbles it. And it's recovered by Saudi Daisy. As giving up turnovers was not what the doctor ordered. You see Klein lose it. Then Cortez tried to take off running instead of falling on it. He had green grass in front of him. That's why he tried to take off. But now it's a turnover, and we don't get inside the print FX orange zone. So two double whammies there yeah. on the Reeves Reeds tonight. And that's really tough, guys, because you're driving to go up two scores. Now they're driving to possibly take the lead. Yep. And we haven't been able to really – Stop their rushing attack. 7.30 to go. They could eat up most of this clock. And then they get and the they ball. And they get the ball to start the second quarter. Well, we'll, we'll, we may look back on this play. Running left. Quarterback, he's going to throw it. We're That's there. Picked off. Dabrowski intercept. No, oh, man. Are you kidding me? That was a gimme. 
I don't know if Jackson will have an easier catch than that one. I, I said it a little early. <laughs> he don't drop many things. It definitely, he shouldn't have dropped that one. As he, uh, Maybe he just started to run before he caught it. To bring up second down. Can't believe the Saudi Daisy tailback even decided to throw that. Right after you get the momentum, I'm not sure that's the play I would have went with. But the way they've been able to run the ball, might as well try something. Second down and 10. Dodd in the pistol. He will take it. Hand to Welch. Hole over here. Still on his feet. Tackled at the 30-yard. They're going to give him the 31. Yeah, he did. Wow. He looked like he got bent. Give him four. It'll be third down and six. Quickly to the line of scrimmage are the Trojans. Seven minutes left here, second quarter. Blunt showing pressure off the edge. They won't jump. Saudi Daisy will change the play. Yeah, Blunt showing a lot of pressure. I'd expect a few guys to drop back in coverage here. They're going to run it. Hand off. Straight ahead. There's the governors, Reed, they and Brooks, and Query. And it'll be a punting situation for the Trojans. Yeah, I think they're going to say that he lost a yard there. He did, Carter. So we up making a little bit of an adjustment on that power run game from the Trojans. And the turnover did not yield any points. So Reed will set to field the punt, standing at his own 40. Let's see if Williams does the punting also for the Trojans. And statement stop there by the William Blunt defense. Yeah, it looks like William. 40 on his 40. 40 is the punt. 40, 4 0. Looks like that, the punter is going to be the Davis. tight end, Hay or, yeah, Hayden Davis. Good punt. Fielded at the 30 by Reed. Straight ahead, breaking some tacklers, plus the 40. Oh, he's right there at the 40. Good return. Five fifty four here remaining in the first half. They're going to mark him down at the 39. So, need to get some points here. 5.54 to go in the half. 44 0 is the punter. Yeah, Davis. Davis. Here's Klein to the right, turning Big it up. Hole. And breaking tacklers getting out of bounds. Pass <laughs> midfield and giving 12 for a first down. That's a blunt partnership, first down for the Governors into Saudi territory at the 49. Clock got out of bounds, but somehow the clock rolls. Cortez running left. Got, got a lot of room ahead. over here. And he turned the corner, he will get hit out of bounds. It'll be another first down. We'll see where they mark it at the 38. Three, or 33, excuse yeah, me, 33 yeah. 33 yard line. So 16, 16 more right there, Robbie, on that run. Just a quarterback sweep there. Nothing fancy. Just trying to get the numbers in your favor. 534 left here, second quarter. William Blunt leading by set six. Straight drop. Cortez got a man out right. He didn't throw. He goes left right. Dabrowski didn't drop this one. Touchdown, Devo. 33-yard touchdown from Brett to the sophomore Jackson Nebrowski and the Govs. We gonna go for two right here? I would, looks, no, doesn't look like we are. Looks like they're just gonna do the extra point. That's a red tech touchdown as the Govs put 20 or 19 on the board. That was the first extra point we would missed since week one. Chad Claybo's yelling go for two over here, but they're gonna kick it. Extra point up, extra point looks good. And it is, it's 20 to seven now. We'll take a 60 second break.
No, it's two to one. All right, we're back here. Short kick going to be fielded by Saudi Daisy at the 10. Running straight ahead. Got blockers in front of him and hit it around the 30. But a good return of about 20 yards. And not bad coverage for the Governors as the return man was number four that time, Corbin York. Yeah, York's been a bit of their speedster um, in the backfield when he's back there. It looks like they really like to go outside a lot more. So, Five minutes before halftime. At halftime, we'll have stats with Stan. You'll see the bands playing. And we'll have a little pitch segment as, Stan, me and you are at the bottom this year of the standings. <laughs> so does that. We'll Man. see. I'm not sure who's doing the – but we'll have a – we'll go over some college football games tomorrow. Big one at 3.30 on CBS. I reckon so. In motion. Here's a play action. Dodd across the middle. High pass. Going to be caught by 19. That's Coulter again. 14. I'm sorry. Lot. That's a really good catch there. The ball a little bit behind him. Able to concentrate as it comes in. Big gain. Just like that, they're into William Blunt territory. Pressure showed by William Blunt. Hand on, no play action. In the backfield, oh, nice. it's Randy Reed, I believe, with a big red tech sack coming off the edge. Play action right into that blitz. Minus nine. That's a big loss for the Trojans. Give me, yeah, minus eight. Stan. We'll see. One, yeah. Two, yeah, eight. Yeah, they moved it up. They give me forward progress. Uh, well, you like when you blitz to the right side. Uh, doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, it works out in your favor nine times out of ten. Play clock down to 15 on the play clock. That's yeah, he, Dodd. Came, he came all the way over to the sideline, Robbie, to get that. Yeah, he's going to struggle to get this playoff. He's got five on the play clock, still not in formation. And Coach Three. Cardwell, yeah, Cardwell is going to take a timeout yeah. here. I, don't, I didn't like that decision to bring him all the way to the sideline. That's their last time out of the half. This time out's going to be brought to you by South Park Storage and Penske Truck Reynolds at the end of William Lunt Drive at 411 South. We'll take a 60 second break. Second down and 18 for the Trojans. William Lutt has all three timeouts. We have just under four minutes left before half. Dodd in the pocket, throws across the middle too far, and it'll stop the clock here. Not what you wanted to do. No. Hey, Robbie, got to go ahead, Stan. Give a shout out to the Anderson family, Donnie and Jama. Oh, yeah. Watching in. Long time listeners. And uh, they, they commended Brad, our cameraman, for getting a shot of the band across the way. All right. Over there. That brings up a thick third down and long right here, Robbie. So, yeah. Saudi is kind of in a little pickle here. If they throw it, they have the risk of stopping the clock. Yeah, William Blunt needs to. They're gonna, they are going to yeah, throw they're it. They're going to go five wide. The, empty the backfield. And it's a straight drop. Blitz coming. Screen. Screen set up nicely. And oh, getting boy. outside. And now good tackle there 
Brings up fourth down and about six or seven. Yeah, yep. I really like the play call there, just a shoot screen. He's able to. So no timeout call by William Blunt. That, that'll give them time. They're just going to punt. I think I would have tried to run up there and try to draw them off sides and then take a delay a yeah. game. And try to get a fourth and two. But this is just kind of, looks like they're just kind of conceding the ball here. Reed will stand at his five yard line. Try to field it. Four seconds on the play clock. Three seconds, two, it's a delay a game. This will be a five yard penalty. Yeah, why would you not? Well, I'm saying you go up there and try to draw them off sides. Well, I know that's seconds. what I meant, Rod. Yeah. If you're going to take the delay, why, why not try to draw them? Right. Anyway, so. You don't see that type of stuff as much on the high school level. So now the clock stops with the penalty. So that'll move it back to the 47. Now, now Reed stands on his nine yard line. He just needs to let it go. It's going to be a oh, fake. Oh, it's a fake. Oh, then he almost dropped it. And he's going to be He's going to get the first down, the guys. First down. Wow. Wow. Just stood up. He about bobbled the ball. He then catches it. Number 11 on the catch. Eggleton misses the tackle. And Sellers didn't even die for him. We got to make that play there, guys. Need all out effort there on a fourth down. It's fourth and 12. And now Saudi Daisy's going to look to take this one to the half after scoring. They're going to choose some clock. Very tricky there. How many times do you see somebody take a delay and then pull and then, a fake? And then run the fake. They needed, they needed more room. That felt like Beamer ball for sure, guys. First and 10 for the Trojans. Dodd takes it, handoff straight ahead, jumping over the pile and getting forward for about three or four was Welch. Witherspoon nope. with the tackle. No timeouts. They're going to have to go quick as clock ticks under two minutes here. They do get the ball to start the second half. So a field goal right here would cut it to 10 at worst case. They're looking for six, though. Could be a possible tackle for loss. And he's hit and stops the clock out of bounds. And he got positive. Down to the 26-yard line. So brings up third down and two. Now they can breathe a little bit. Expect a third down here, but definitely four down territory. Expect maybe a, a, a play action and a slip here, either tight end or the fullback going out for a route. Doing a little, taking a little bit more time here on this play call. Down to 10 seconds. I'd just go power football here. Yeah. But it's a different tailback in there. It is the tailback, number four, Ross. York. York. He's going to get the first down. And clock stops momentarily with 135. First down for the Trojans around the 22 yard line. Uh, the guy wasn't set. Fullback wasn't set. He got away with it. Out of bounds as they run for four or five. He actually gave him six, Robbie, all the way down to 17. That may be just five. Give him five. Clock does stop. 126 to go. Second and five, Trojan. Like Welch is back in with Ross at the H at the fullback. Dodd in the pistol. Second and five. Shotgun. Handoff straight ahead. Staying on his feet. That'll run some clock. Yeah. Give him three down to the 14. They're definitely inside field goal range, but they're thinking about six. Timeout, William Blunt's going to have to take a timeout. Coach out. Cortez will take this timeout. First one of the half for William Blunt. It's brought to you by East Tennessee Insurance, your local independent insurance agency. Give them a call.
split tailbacks here in the shotgun for the Trojans. Third down and two. And looking for the fade pattern. One on one coverage, out of bounds. He dove, he caught it, and it was out of bounds. It'll bring up fourth down and two. And they'll probably go for it here. Trailing by 13 are the Trojans. Sam, this drive has been, uh, they had a fourth down and 12 that they converted on. So here's their second fourth down that they're trying to convert on this drive to get points. Yeah, and if they don't get this, guys, William Blunt with two of their three timeouts remaining. And an, and an explosive offense that's been able to score 20 already tonight, three for three. Three out of four on scoring drives. Yeah, we'll worry about that here in a minute. We, yeah, we got to make the stop. Well, just a tailback. Ross is the fullback. Dodd in the pistol. They'll run it. It'll be a handoff. And no. nowhere to go. Query gets the stop. Govs will take over with 57.2. Here's your Heartland Roofing replay. As William Lutz sold out on the run, being fourth down and short. It'll be a turnover on downs. That query. Trojan. It was Tristan Query, sophomore linebacker in the right spot. William Boyne, a long field to go, but with the two timeouts and how quickly you've been able to chunk the field up. Actually, Tristan's a junior. Labeled him wrong. He was a captain tonight. Split tailbacks for Clyde will be Klein and Brooks. Two receivers right, one left is Stewart. In the gun is, is going to be a handoff. Running left is Klein, getting nowhere. Looks like William Blunt might be content to go to the half. Maybe run. Nope, we're going to call timeout. Well, let's see if you could pop one right there and then. Blevins Realty Group timeout, making buyers and sellers happy. We'll keep it here. 47.9 seconds to go. At the half, we'll have stats with Stan. He'll go over the scoring in the first half. We will have the playing of the bands. We'll have the pit se pick segment, and we'll give you some scores on the Gov Nation scoreboard as uh, some rivalry games tonight going on. One down here, Cleveland and Bradley, and one in Blunt County with Maryville and Alcoa. At the half, that one was 14 to 14. So it'll be second down and eight. Give Klein two yards there. William Blunt with one timeout left. Same formation. See if they go a little RPO off of this. Now they'll bring Brooks into the H-back position. Cortez will roll to his right, looking to his right. Now he's got a man wide open, Dabrowski. Had to wait on it. Catches it, 40, 35, 30, outruns everybody. It'll oh be my. an 84-yard touchdown for the Governors. <laughs> That's a red tech touchdown as Gavin Dabrowski, the senior, makes the catch, breaks a tackle, and just outruns the safety. Unbelievable, Robbie. He had to wait on yeah, it. Yeah, he was wide open. He came wide open. If Brett would have seen him earlier, it would have been an easy touchdown. Claybo wants to go for two. Coach Reeves is not hearing it. Uh, he they, are, they are going to call timeout and go for two, it looks like. This timeout's going to be brought to you by Circulation Station. Relieving pain with technology. Get three free treatments when you tell them you listen to the Voice of Champions. AM 1470. We'll take a 60-second break. Not if it's less than 15 yards, isn't it? Yes. We're back here, yes. two-point conversion, split tailbacks, Klein and Brooks. Cortez in the gun, takes it. Hands, no keeps it, Cortez He's will gonna run walk it. In. And it's now 28 to seven, the Govs by 21. 
with 32 seconds left here before intermission and all the momentum seized by the governors who made this trip down south looking for their first win south of the Okoe since 2007. We'll take a 30 second break after the Red Tech scoring drive. We are back here, 32 seconds. 32 seconds left before half. Anywhere movers kickoff is right down the left side. Maybe he's taken at the 10 yard line. We must got him hemmed in and they will tackle him at the 25. Oh, he spins ahead to the 26. Took some time off. Saudi Daisy has one timeout left, or no timeouts no time left. And only 25 seconds yet to score. Here's our Heartland Roofing replay. Touchdown right there to Dabrowski and puts the Gubs up. And then after the two point conversion, puts them up by 21. Seizing the momentum right before halftime, saying usually it goes the other way for us. Yeah, it does, Robbie. And with them getting the ball, I was really concerned if they get that fourth down right there, we might be looking at a seven point game or six point game. Looks like Cortez is in at safety on this prevent. Fumble on the ground, get on the ball. We got it. It's a turnover with 20. Why is the clock running? Why is the clock? Come on. 18.3 left before half. William Blunt does still have one timeout left. We're going to go skinny Air Force formation here. I can hear Coach Claybow in my headset. 18.3. I think we've got one timeout left. One timeout, and we are in the print FX orange zone immediately on the change of possession. One of Reeves reads here was to create turnovers, and so far... They've done that tonight. Three receivers at the top. Stewart at the bottom. Klein is the tailback. Cortez in the gun. Looks to the right. Standing tall in the pocket. Now will throw it to the cool right side. Caught. Dabrowski down there. Timeout used with eight. Why are we not caught? To because it's not a first down. But why do we not And there's going to be a flag here. Um, are we out of time? Oh, wait a minute. There's a flag back here. There's going to be a flag down here. I don't think Brett could get up. I think there was a... a Defensive lineman on him. I don't know what they're going to call here. Could be after the play on William Blunt, one of the offensive linemen. So. Who was the pass to? The pass was, I think, Clark. to Jackson. Was it Jackson? Or Jackson. I think it was Jackson Dabrowski. There's got to be some time on the clock here. Yeah, we. It's on both, it's offsetting. But it's gonna be after the play. Did we just get somebody ejected? I think we just got somebody ejected. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not. There was unsportsmanlike on both teams and then a personal foul on us. Well, I guess that's gonna end the half. Yeah, we're gonna go to the half. I don't know why the clock is, why would that end the half, guys? It can't end the half, there's penalties. Right, that should have stopped. You can't, the clock, the, the clock can't, the clock stops on, right, penalty. on the penalty. And I think that, 
eight or nine seconds. Huh? Heartland Roofing Halftime Show here at Saudi Daisy. It's been a good first half for the Governors as they've rolled up 28 first half points. They lead the Trojans 28-7 here at the half. We'll move right into stats with Stan and go across the scoring. First, William Blunt on their opening drive went 54 yards, and Darius Brooks topped it off with a two-yard run. Plemons' kick was good. William Blunt led 7-0. And that's the way the first quarter ended. Second quarter, William Blunt gets on the board again with a 56-yard pass from Cortez to Stewart. Cortez, uh, or excuse me, the kick was no good. Blunt was up 13-0 at that point. But South, or excuse me, South, not South Doyle, Saudi Daisy responded with a seven-yard pass from Ross, or excuse me, from Dodd to Ross. Williams' kick made it 13-7. Then Jackson Dabrowski catches a 33-yard pass from Cortez. Plymouth's kick is good, 20-7. to William Blunt at that point, and then after William Blunt stops them on down, they strike gold on an 85-yard pass from Cortez to Gavin Dabrowski. And William Blunt, the extra point was, actually they went for two right there. Cortez runs it in. Blunt leads 28-7 to at the half. And again, we want to uh, remind you this is Stats with Stan, brought to, by, by, brought to you by Red Tech, the best refrigerant in the business for LG appliances. You see the number there on your screen. Here are your statistics. First downs, William Blunt 11, Saudi Daisy 10. William Blunt's rushed it 15 times for 105 yards. Saudi rushed it 22 for 82. William Blunt only threw it eight times. They completed six of eight. Three of those were for touchdowns, no interceptions. 200 yards for Brett Cortez through the air. Saudi was very, uh, very efficient as well. Eight of 12, one touchdown, no interceptions. 109 through the air for them. Total yards, William Blunt leads 305 to 191. Excuse me, that's 311 because I didn't put that last one on there. 311 to 191. Penalties. William Blunt only two penalties. And, of course, it was one of them was late there to, to run off at two penalties for 20 yards. Saudi had five for 40. Both teams had a turnover as both teams fumbled one time. 
William Blunt did not punt. Saudi Daisy punted once for 40 yards. Here are your individual statistics. Brett Cortez on the ground, four carries for 44 yards. Aiden Klein has 10 carries for 59 yards. Darius Brooks, one carry for two yards, but it was a touchdown. As we said, Cortez through the air is six of eight for 206, actually. I said 200 earlier. It's actually 206. Um, no interceptions and three touchdowns. Jackson Dabrowski has four catches for 53 and a touchdown. Gavin has one catch for 85 and a touchdown. Stewart, two catches, one a touchdown for 68 yards. Over on the side, on the, uh, excuse me, on the Dottie side, Saudi Daisy side, on the ground, it's been mostly Welch. He has 13 carries, 75 yards. Also getting in on the action, Ross has one carry for seven yards. And York with four carries for 10 yards. The quarterback, Dodd, is in the negative. Three carries for negative 10. Of course, those are sacks in there. Dodd, through the air, has thrown it 10 times, completing six, seven of those for 98 yards. He did have the one touchdown as well. Also, Welch attempted a pass that was incomplete, and the punter, Davis has one, one pass for 11-yard completion on the fake fourth down punt. Actually, 12 yards on that, I believe. Um, through the air, the uh, or excuse me, Jackson with a couple catches for 35 yards. Of course, Ross has the the one catch for a touchdown. Uh, actually, has two catches, excuse me. He also has the touchdown. He also converted the fourth down play as well. So two catches for 19 yards for Ross. Lott has a catch for 24 yards. Castlin with one for 12. And also York has one for 10. And once again, your halftime stats with Stan brought to you by Red Tech. William Blunt with the 28-7 lead. We'll be back in just a sec. sec uh, just a minute with our pick section.
All right, it's time for our college pick segment, the Pick'em. We'll go ahead and start. Oh, yeah, this is brought to you by Red Tech Refrigerant, the best refrigerant in the business for LG appliances. Give them a call, 865-983-1633. So we'll go ahead and show our standings here after Richard gets it uh, set up here. I hear a, a subtle boo from uh, Rob Lotz, who is, I believe, either in last place or second to last. Um, I'm going to be joined here by Brad Porch, the cameraman, professional cameraman Brad Porch, I should say. He's going to be helping me out with pickums tonight. All righty, standings. Tyler, 31-6. Rob, 25-22, so above 100. Stan, 26-21. Timothy, 29-18. Brad, right behind him, 28 and 19. Richard leading the way at 32 and 15. Me, 27, 20, and Lucas, 31 and 16. It was a top that was 10 and 13, so yeah. great comeback. Great oh, comeback. Yeah. All right, first game, 3.30 kick on CBS, number 17, Tennessee. Heads down to number 11, Alabama, down in Tuscaloosa. Alabama at a nine-point spread. I believe that's moved to eight and a half now. Um, you want to go ahead and make your pick, Brad? Yeah, we talked about this game on the way up here. I think Alabama's going to win. We haven't won at Brian Denny since Casey Clawson was our quarterback. So I'm going to go with Alabama to win, but Tennessee to cover, 27-20. Tied. All righty. Uh, everybody but Timothy and everybody but Timothy and um, Lucas agree with you, um, including me. I agree with you. Bama's going to win this game. I believe Tennessee will cover, but I'm not confident that the Volunteers are going to be able to win one in Bryant Denny. Next game Penn State heading over to Ohio. They're playing Ohio State. Number three ranked Ohio State. Ohio State favored here at four and a half. It's a 12 o'clock kick on Fox. I'll go ahead and make my pick. Um, I went back and forth on this game a little bit. Ohio State hasn't looked like the Ohio State of the past. Uh, Penn State is always pretty good, but it's never really able to get over the hump and, and beat uh, Ohio State. But they're going to this year. Ohio, Ohio okay. State is going to go down. Penn State will beat them at home. I think Reggie Wayne Jr. Uh, comes in and makes a makes a game game winning catch here late in, late in the game. I'm gonna go with the Buckeyes. All righty. Let's see here. Um, this one's really split across the board. Um, Tyler going with Penn State. Rob going with Ohio State. Richard with Ohio State. Stan with Ohio State. Lucas with Penn State. And Timothy with Penn State. Next game, 3.30 kick on SEC Network. Number 20, Missouri, welcomes in South Carolina. South Carolina got on a bit of a skid recently as Missouri's a seven-and-a-half-point favorite. Uh, Brad, you want to go ahead and give me your pick? Yeah, you really don't know what you're going to see from either of these teams from week to week, it seems like, so far through the season. But I'm just going to go with the home team here and go with Mizzou. Yeah, it uh, looks like everybody agrees with you. I do as well. Missouri's going to win this game. South Carolina, their offensive line is just too bad, yeah. and, and Missouri's offense is hard to stop. Yep, Kentucky couldn't stop them. <laughs> All right, next game up is Wake Forest versus Pitt. It looks like this one is about also. A pick -em. It looks like yeah. it's almost a pick -em. Yeah. Wake favored here at one, probably one and a half, I think now I was looking. Um, it's a 3.30 kick on ACC Network. Um, Brad, you want to go ahead and give me your pick here? Yeah, I went to Pitt a couple years ago when Tennessee played them the first game of the year, and Pitt fans weren't really that great to me, so I will never pick Pittsburgh. I'm going to go Wake Forest. <laughs> well, that's a that's a good, a good decision there. Um, I also went with Wake Forest. Um, I haven't really watched a whole lot of the ACC this year other than Florida State and Clemson. Um, and Pittsburgh, it's not in Pittsburgh. If it was in Pittsburgh, I'd probably pick Pitt to win this game, but I'm going to go with the Demon Deacons. They actually play at the Steelers Stadium. I don't yeah. know if you know that. Yeah, yeah. surprised me when I got up there. Looks like everybody else went with Wake Forest, except for Richard and Stan. They're going to pick uh, Pitt to win this game. Um, so, almost a clean sweep except for two. Same up. Ohio, or, excuse me, Oklahoma State University at West Virginia. 
West Virginia. Is West Virginia still in the kingdom? Um, I don't believe so. I think they are at home, but I think they lost the game. Yeah. Um, West Virginia's favored three and a half here. It's a 330 kick on ESPN. I'll go ahead and make my pick. Um, I'm pretty sure I went with West Virginia. Yeah. Uh, I do I didn't. Excuse me. I went with Oklahoma State. Um, I was kind of back and forth on this game as well. That's why I really couldn't remember which guy I picked or which team I picked. Um, I, I just, with Mike Gundy um, as your head coach, it's, uh, he, he always wins a game he's not supposed to win. Um, and, and I think that's probably the case here. I know it's, it's almost a push, three-and-a-half-point favor here is West Virginia, the Mountaineers, but – um, I just I think I think Gundy's going to pull this one out, so I'm going to go with the soon or the uh, Cowboys. Yeah, I think uh, West Virginia bounces back this week and gets the win. All righty, um, looks like this one is just about West Virginia all the way, except for Timothy and Lucas. It looks like they agree with me here on Oklahoma State taking this one. Next up is a 7.30 ESPN game. It looks like Ole Miss at Auburn. All righty. This one, ESPN, three-and-a-half point favor, favorite is uh, – that says UNC. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure I what's going Ole on Miss there. Is, I think Ole yeah. Miss is favored by – Yeah, Ole Miss is favored by – I think five or six yeah, and a half. A um, I'm, I'm going to go with Ole Miss. I think Ole Miss is going to win this game. Um, Auburn's inability to pass the football is is going to lose them the game here. So I'm going to go with Ole Miss. I'm going to go with a little War Eagle right here, and hopefully we run Lane Kiffin's day and weekend. Yeah, looks like everybody is going against you this time, Brad. Right. Ole Miss all the way across the board, so could pick up a, a win here and uh, move up the spot. Texas Tech at BYU. Yeah, Texas Tech, a three-point favorite on the road. This is a 7 o'clock kick on FS1. I'll go ahead and make my pick here. I went with BYU. Um, Texas Tech, I just haven't seen a whole lot to impress me. BYU is not necessarily great either. Um, but I'm going to go with BYU at home. I think the, the home field advantage is going to give them the edge. Yeah, I think the home field advantage, and I just think they're more, more physical than Texas Tech, so I'm going to go with BYU as well. This one kind of split. Um, Stan went with Texas Tech. Timothy with BYU. Lucas with BYU. Richard with BYU. Oh, excuse me, it's BYU across the board except for uh, Stan who picked Texas Tech. Okay, next game up, Duke at Florida State. This should be a good game. Yeah, Florida State, a 14-and-a-half point favorite at home. That is a tough place to play. It's 7.30 kick on ABC. Um, Brad, go ahead and make your pick here. Yeah, I, I mean, I think Duke has a lot of weapons here. Uh, I, I think they definitely cover the 14-and-a-half, but I'm going to go with FSU to win out, right? Yeah, I'm going to go with you as well, Brad. Um, I think it really comes down to Jimmy's and Joe's, and – um, Florida State just has more of them. So I'm yeah. going to go with the Seminoles at home. It looks like everybody else is agreeing with us. Florida State all the way. Okay. Next game Utah. on Fox, Utah 8 o'clock kick. At USC. Yep. Utah, the higher-ranked team here after USC lost to Notre Dame on the road. I'll go ahead and make my pick. Um, I haven't seen anything from the Utah offense, even with Cam rising back. I haven't seen a whole lot. So I'm going to go with USC, even though their defense couldn't stop anything. I'm going to go with the Trojans. Yeah, I think Caleb Williams is going to try to get back on his Heisman track that he has been on. I'm going to go with the USC as well. Yeah, looks like everybody agrees with us except for Stan. Stan's taking Utah here, trying to build some ground, I think, and uh, maybe flip it so he can, he can move up in the, in the <laughs> rankings. Only way to do it. Our final game, Clemson heads down to Miami. They're playing the Hurricanes. Clemson a three-point favorite on the road. This is an 8 o'clock kick on ACC Network. Brad? You know, what we've seen out of the Hurricanes the last two weeks, lost to North Carolina, and then there's that inexcusable loss where they ran the ball when they could have just taken a knee. I, I just can't go with Miami. I'm going to go with Clemson. Yeah, I agree with you. I think Clemson's going to win this game. They're going to win it outright. Um, I don't. I don't trust Mario Cristobal calling the plays to to Correct. for them to win this game. 
So, um, looks like everybody agrees with us, except for Rob and Richard. They're going with Miami. Of course, Robbie going to go with his favorite team. And Richard, he's got some trust in Crystal Ball, I reckon. So, that, that good. Oh, he says in my ear, just better players. <laughs> so, that'll conclude our pick segment. Once again, that's brought to you by um, Red Tech, the best refrigerant in the business for LG appliances. Give them a call, 865-983-1633. We'll take a one-minute break. Thanks for having me. Two-minute break. All right, we're back here to finish up the halftime report brought to you by Heartland Roofing. We'll go, up, go with some scores from around the area. Um, Jobbins Bennett is up 21-7 on Crockett. Jefferson County, 49-0 over um, Cock County. Last we saw, Alcoa and Maryville were still 14-14 in the now going to the fourth. A couple interceptions there by... The tornadoes in the end zone uh, that Maryville's been able to keep a chance of pulling that upset off tonight. And let's see, Eagleton up 21 nothing on Cosby. Actually, Robbie, that's 28 nothing now. 28 nothing. Nice job there by the Royal Knights. Uh, Morristown East only trailing um, by 21 to 9 against Campbell County. And Bradley Central and Cleveland stand was that twenty two to twenty? Yep, with two forty nine to go in the third. Wow. So Bradley. That's one of those scenarios yeah. that can mess some things up if Cleveland was to upset the number one well tied for first place are Bradley and Bearden. Bearden was in a little bit of a battle. Also, Farragut leads Harden Valley fourteen to three. Bearden was playing uh, Morristown West. They lead seventeen fourteen in the third. That's a non region game, but still. Seymour leads South Duel 14 to 13. Powell over McMinn County. McMinn County's been pretty good. They beat Oak Ridge um, earlier in this year, so I, know, I feel like McMinn County's a pretty good team. West and Halls. West leads 17 to 9 over Halls. That's a pretty hot game at the half, isn't it? Yeah, you'd think that um, West would have went been West not been. As sound as they were last year, I know they beat Maryville earlier. They lost a lot of players for that team, and it's kind of catching up. They started, they started really good. 
And Ro Robbie, my goodness, Stan. Uh, Udawal, how far has Udawal fallen from the days back 15 years ago? They lost to an 0-7 Coffee County team, 75 to nothing. Or, well, actually 1-7, I guess. Uh, that's yeah. got to be a misprint. Yeah. I would think so. But. Let's hope for the owl's sake. Oak Ridge, that we're still having a battle with Lenore City, 23-12 in the fourth quarter. That's for that region title. Both those teams were undefeated coming in. William Blunt's going to be doing the kicking off here in the third quarter, leading 28 to 7, kicking right to left on your radio dial and on AM 1470. It is a kick down the left side, going to be taken at the 13 yard line, coming down the right side and getting past the 25. Good tackle right there by Sellers. And we are froze again, I think, over here, maybe. It's just lagging. Yeah. So. Really, Robbie, you think back to that. We got news at halftime of an ejection. Yeah. Uh, we, got that, we, got a, we got a camera angle that shows nothing that warranted an ejection. But the referees down here have ejected Nathan Flores for shoving uh, as the Saudi Daisy players stood over and stayed on top of William Blunt quarterback at the end of the half, and then an ejection occurred after fumble, fumble on the ground. Field. We're going to get this one, maybe, maybe no, not. They're going to recover it. Thirty's going to recover for a big loss. Had the opportunity, but unable to. I think thirty may be hurt. Welch, Welch is slow to get up. But what hurts about Flores being ejected? He's ejected for next week is uh, his last game, most likely, barring some uh, crazy upsets there for William Blunt to get into the playoffs. But I have been told William Blunt will try to appeal it, but we know how the TWS delay is. Uh, I don't know if that will, that will happen. Loss of 10, second and 20 for the Trojans. Dodd rolling to his left, stepping up, going down. I believe that's Henson, Caleb Henson, sophomore linebacker, with a big red tech sec back to the 10. Wow. Now, William Blunt done a really good job recently of uh, shooting the gap um, whenever they roll him out. Third in the school now as Flo uh, Cortez and Ethan Miller will check in oh. at back safeties. The third and 27, Robbie. They went minus 10, minus 7. So I would look for a screen or a draw right here. Yeah, if I had to guess, I, I would agree with you, Stan. This is going to be a... A screen, or I think they'll probably just try and power it. Five on the play clock as Dodd ain't set. Three, two, one. It's going to be a delay, yeah. and there it is. And good job by Coach Cardwell just not taking the timeout. No point when you got this far of a field to go. Five-yard penalty. So, so third and 32. Yep. We had a first and five last week and finished with a second and 37. So <laughs> we know exactly what they're dealing with. See if we bring some pressure here. You expect a handoff here for the Trojans. And I know it's a screen pass out here to the right. And tackled immediately, lost a yard maybe. No, give him line of scrimmage. Yeah. That's number 11. On the catch, Blake Castile, Castellan. And Witherspoon out there from the outside linebacker position to make the tackle. So they'll have to punt with their feet in the end zone. Yeah, and expect William Blunt. Well, you would think that they bring pressure, but considering they faked one earlier, nah. even though they're backed up so far, you got. I think you got to play protect here, maybe. Remember yeah, last, remember last set week, up a Tennessee return. set up the return, and it uh, ended up being a big touchdown for D. So I think Reed is standing like on his own 34-yard line. What do we have here? William Blunt wants a timeout. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. They're counting them. Yeah, we've got plenty. Now they're going to bring off Taco. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now we've got ten. What are we doing? <laughs> Well, what, what? confused up here in the what box, if you time? can't tell. Yeah, they got 10 right now. 
They had it right. I don't. Uh, yeah, Randy Reed with throwing his hands in the air. He's like, we had everybody. I don't know what we're doing. Right. That's his job is to count, yeah. and he counted correctly. This timeout is going to be brought to you by Bonner Burger, home of the two for nine dollar quarter pounders with cheese. We'll keep it here. I don't know if that was a call from the sideline because you would think if they've got a question, they just ask the guys up here in the box. Well, you know you can't have 12, right, Stan? Is that right. one of those automatic first downs? If you play a play with 12? Uh, it's legal particip participation, but I don't think it is automatic. It's just 15 no, yards. Nothing is really automatic in high school. I, know, I was wondering if that was yeah. the one of the ones. But still, I don't think we needed to waste a timeout on them, but we do have a 21-point cushion. Davis in the end zone will take the snap, get it away. Short kick, Reed will catch it at the 32, straight ahead at the 30 to the 28. Pretty good coverage. Yeah, really good coverage there by Saudi. Eight yards short of the first down marker, so. <laughs> So William Lunt set up shop inside Saudi territory at the 29. An excellent field position for your opening drive in the half. 9.23 left, third quarter. William Lunt's first drive, second half. They are three out of five tonight, or I'm sorry, four out of six on scoring drives. Four receivers at the bottom, one receiver at the top. Cortez, five wide, straight quarterback keeper, running left, big hole, Lots cuts it back moves. inside. It's going to be a house call for number four. Dinner's on the table. He's going to get it. That's 29-yard scamper for BC. Adios. There's your adios, brought to you by Bowen Door Service, shutting the door on the competition. Tonight, the competition was the Saudi Daisy Trojans. And the Govs now leading by 27. Extra point by Plemons. He's up. The kick is good. 35 7. We'll take a 60 second break. Movers pooch kick down the middle and taken at the 10-yard line. Straight ahead is York. Good field oh position. Oh, boy. And Ali is going to be a possible return no. right out to midfield. Clemens. Last week, we saw the same thing. Yeah, Jackson Dabrowski, or excuse me, Gavin Dabrowski got held right up the middle, opening a hole for York to go, but no call as this one's at the 50-yard line. Good tackle by Plemons, the kicker. Yeah, Robbie. really good tackle. He doesn't do that. It probably is a touchdown. Put him back there at DB. And I, I think the text I just got said Maryville has intercepted Alcoa again. <laughs> Alcoa has yet to punt tonight. But somehow the game is tied in the fourth quarter with seven minutes to go. Just things happen in that rivalry, yep. don't they, Stan? They do. Here's a handoff up the middle. And oh. he breaking through. And getting outside could be a block in the back. They called it. But, and somebody's hurt for, for Saudi Daisy. One of their interior linemen. So they're going to get 
Looks like they're going to gain four yards on the run. And then the penalty is going to bring it back to the 46. We'll take a uh, short break as they tend to the injured player for Saudi Daisy. All right, give him four yards for Ross on the, with the penalty of the block in the back downfield. So it brings up first and six for the Trojans. Here is a handoff up the middle, bouncing, nice jump cut right there. I believe that was York getting five down to bring up second down and one. Corbin York, number four. Senior tailback for the Trojans. We have 7.45 left here in the third. William Blunt leading 35 to seven. Split tailbacks for the Trojans. He'll take it, hand off up the middle. Not, no, yeah, second effort. It. Yep. Nice play there. Well, uh, you, uh, Ross, on second effort, uh, Stan, I think you're right. I think uh, starter Welch may be out. I think he got hurt on that fumble recovery down here. Yeah. Looked like he's kind of got his arm pinned back or his shoulder. That's a first down for the Trojans. Third quarter first down is brought to you by the Party Zone, your birthday specialist at Roll Arena. First and 10 Trojans at the 40. Yeah, Saudi Daisy really chewing clock right here. Slant pad and no out pattern gonna be caught. Turning the corner is the speedster, number 11 this time. And that is Blake Castellan. I think it was a forward pass. And William Lunt's got a player down. Is that Taco? Yeah. No. Freddie Reed. Reed. All right, we'll take a short break as they tend to Randy. Trojans. The guy was moving backwards at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. He's going to take this one for 
pretty decent game, though, is the quarterback, Dodd. So, Stan, we, remember we talked about that in the powder puff game. Yeah. Can you be moving backwards right. at the snap of the ball? I don't think you can. Uh, as, a, as an eligible receiver, but give him five yards on his quarterback scamper. Uh, 21-21 in the Alcoa game with five minutes left. Giving four, actually. It'll be second down and six. Dodd, handoff. Welch is back in. Back in, yeah. And yeah, he's, he's got power. Way. Close to now, it is going to be a first down, I believe. First down at the 15 yard line. Yep, the big sexy's pushing him for an extra few yards. It's now the clock will stop. They'll reset the chains. Have some substitutions here for William Blunt as the clock ticks under six and a half minutes here. And William Blunt has already appealed the ejection and we're in the third quarter of the game ain't even finished. <laughs> Talking about an athletic director that's on top of things. <laughs> Robert Scott Cut. 6.16 left. First and 10 at the 15. Dodds fumbled the ball, gets on it, has a chance to throw it back in the end zone. Good coverage. Yeah, really good coverage. Once again, Saudi Daisy wanting to pass a interference. If, I think if he runs towards the ball, Taco stopped him, he yeah. could have got the pass interference, but he kind of just stopped. Yeah. I think Saudi Stan has a chance to get in the playoffs next week with a win over Signal Mountain. I think that'll be for the four seed in their region. William Blunt's all depends on help from Morristown East. Second and goal. Handoff. Welch into the end zone. Touchdown. Trojans. 35-13 now. Don't go away yet. Six minutes to go. Uh, 58 for Saudi Daisy. He's going to need to watch what he's saying. He's talking a lot of crap for a guy down 35 to 13. Extra point pending. So I missed the Alcoa score. That was oh high snap. Gets it down. A little left. Good. But it's good. Your score, 35-14. We'll take a 60-second break. I missed it. Saudi Daisy looks like they're in a regular kicking formation. Kicking it to Dabrowski on the bounce. Straight ahead, up to the 30 and tackled there. So William Blunt set up shop there. Well, they might call it the 29. We just did get on a long drive, Robbie. All he's done is run one play this yeah. half. 29-yard scamper. He'll take six on one play, though. Yeah. As long as 
long as it's a score. Every drive ends in a kick, supposedly well, from Coach Looks like Clay. they're not going to be like just running it. Four wide, same formation. No, it's not going to run it this time. He's going to throw it. He's got a receiver here going to run under it. Nebraska. Oh, man. Good throw, just a little too far. They got some type of penalty, I think. I believe that was Landon Rich. Where's the flag at, Robbie? Not seeing a flag. Well, why did the referee blow the whistle like that? Oh, maybe the like, guys know that the play was over. I'm not entirely sure. Uh oh, looked like he was waving something dead. Second and 10, just outside the 30 yard line. In, in motion is Debo, Jackson, Nebraska. Tailback is Klein. Three receivers right, one left. Rolling to his left. Got, got Stewart right here. Double move. Chucks it as far as he can. And Dabrowski will jump oh, another. Oh, man. Mistimed his jump on that one, I believe. Went a little too early. That'll be third and ten now. Back-to-back -back plays where William Lunt could have had chunk yardage. I wouldn't be surprised if we see something with the quarterback here, you whether it be an RPO or a QB power. Don't need to punt. It's kind of similar to the Carnes yeah, game where we were I up mean, 35 to 7. Next thing you know, it was 28 to 7. Or 28-35. Straight drop. Bubble screen here to Dabrowski. Got blockers in front of him. Stay inside. He does. First down yardage. These are brought to you by the Roll Arena. 12 yards for Jackson Dabrowski on an easy Pitch and catch, good call there for the Govs offensive staff. Two receivers right, two left. Single set, tailback is Klein. See if we get him a carry. Nope, try to freeze him. We have 520 left here in the third quarter. William Lutt leading 35-14. Moving right to left on the voice of champions AM 1470. Another pass, oh. out pattern gonna be caught. Breaking a tackle, I believe that is Clark. His first Gary catch. Clark with a big catch, last week's player of the game. It's about 25 here. That's his first catch, Robbie, of the night. He's been quiet. Yeah, everybody else with the chunk plays. Garrett with one right there. It was for actually 22, so. 22 yards for Garrett, the hair Clark, the man, the myth, the legend. First and 10 for the Govs. Bubble again to Clark. Straight ahead, avoids a tackle, inside move. Garrett getting close to another first down. Brought to the roll arena, give him 11. It is another first down. Senior wide receiver dancing out there. Clock ticks under five. Cortez will take it. Play action. Moving in the pocket. Going to be flushed. That's a face mask. Grabbed his face mask. And he still can get through. Free play, so make a play. And throws That'll it be. out of bounds. But it'll be a five or 15-yard penalty. I don't think that's a 15. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he was slung with it from the previous spot. See if they get this call right. Personal foul. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a, 15. Well, that'll be a first down. Move it all the way down to what? Well, that well, may be half a distance. the 12 and a half yard line. It'll bring up first and 10 inside the print FX orange zone. Another real arena first down for the governors. Well, Cortez is so shifty in there. Uh, you want to get a hand on him, but, you know. Split tailbacks will be Brooks and Klein. Takes it, hands to Klein. In the hole, Klein's going to take it to the house. AK TD from 13 yards away. William Luck back on top, 41-14. On a Red Tech scoring drive and a big time play, big hole there. Opened up by Hatcher and his troops on the right side. Clemens. Extra point. Snap down. Kick up. Kick good. 42-14. We'll take a 60-second break.
Here's your anywhere movers. Pooch kick down the middle. Going to be taken at the 10-yard line. Straight ahead and tackled from behind to the 28-yard line. I believe that was Dabrowski on the tackle. As it looks like the return man was is hurt, guys. Yeah. He got bent, bent in an awkward way. And then kind of got hit high yeah. as he was bending back. Yeah, it was a bad thing. You know, special teams, you get a lot of injuries. Yeah. Well, it's a big reason they're they're, they're, they're trying to so take fast. special teams yeah, out of the game. Yeah, it's a big reason they're trying to take it out of the game. Can we get a, a zoom in shot on the defensive huddle for William Blow? I want to see if Randy Reed is back out there. It's not looking like that's the case unless he's one of the few numbers we cannot see. Who's tying his shoe there? No, nope, that's Kate. We'll see if Randy comes back in on this possession, but he went out last drive. And the Saudi player. I see him over there. I saw him on the sideline. He didn't look like he was okay, I thought, but he's not in the defensive huddle. Looks like no pressure on the left ankle there of the return man for the Trojans. Hate to see that. They got a big game next week. Don't need no injuries. Yeah, back right there. Yeah, Randy Reed's back. That's good. So it's just, it's just, just a stinger. All right, first and 10 for the Trojans. In the shotgun formation, split tailbacks. It's Dodd. Takes it. Bubble screen. It's incomplete. incomplete. They called it forward. They called it forward. As it looked like Weatherspoon read that one. As you see the Heartland roofing replay. Weatherspoon right there. He was going to make the tackle. It probably would have lost a yard or two. Even if he caught it. So actually good for the Trojans that it went incomplete. We got the balls moved. I didn't see on the thing. Did anybody take Tennessee in the pick segment? Uh, two people, Timothy and Lucas. So the young guys who still have hope in their, their <laughs> volunteer football team. And they're not damaged enough. No. Nope. Second and ten for the Trojans. Here's slant pattern going to be caught. First down yardage at the 40. A good play caller right there, wide open on the slant. That's Keegan Hickman with a catch. like York York and Ross is that the two tailbacks yeah I think so look like they moved somebody took off and then he did a body slam what in the world is this number there's another uh, number 11 <laughs> these two guys have got to go number 11 false started not just that then he just Took a cheap shot. Oh, number nine just got another one. Yeah, they're, they're out of control. And it's been getting this way the last two drives, as we've been hearing Richard say the line have been cheap shot. Now, if you watch the replay, these two receivers just went after the two William Lunt defensive backs. I'm not sure if I got it, guys. We're doing some double action here. No, it's, it's outside the play. So this is going to bring, there's going to be three, I think, 15-yard penalties on the Trojans. Well, well you got, frustration you, you, high. You with had the hats score. going. Yeah. You got flags and hats going, Robbie. They only give them two, they only give them one flag, so he had to throw the. He let it fly. Let, uh, Dead ball. Dead bone. Oh! What? what did he do? Why did he throw the flag or the hat? The that should have been, yeah. There should have been another one. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> well, I'm yeah, sure Coach Reed's just, wanting an explanation here. Nah, there's nothing they can. Uh, there's no explanation that can describe what we just saw on the field. So somebody for William Blunt, I guess Taco got a 
unsportsmanlike, right? Now, well, he was talking after, and he got, he 47 hit. came to he blocked him, calm then him the guy, down. Then the guy did a frog splash on top of him, and then another guy came in and hit a, the other guy late, and then he said something to the ref. And we have 15-yard offsetting penalties. Well, regardless, it should have been should have been two um, on Saudi Daisy, which would mean that they had one extra than William Blunt. I think Eggleton did a so bit of a heel play. You got one yard. They just caught offsides. Offsides on us. Probably on Eggleton. I'm not entirely sure. He wasn't. He wasn't on the other side of the. Unless they're going to say it's uh, some sort of cadence problem. I mean, I don't know. That's that's the only way I could describe that is he was not offsides. <laughs> And they gave him six yards on the on the on the. Um, hey, what is the penalty? They gave oh him six yards God. on the. Oh okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All righty. Oh, wow. Rolling to his right. Dodge steps up. Taco's gonna take him down. No gain or incomplete. Incomplete. Yeah, it went through his hands. So breaks up third down. Well, it's, it's... Look at it. Dude, I just got 58 going like this. Uh, yeah, 68. I just got it. Can't tell the numbers, but yeah. Frustration's obviously going to be high with how this game is, has uh, played out so far, but the referees need to control the, control the game here, and they're not doing a very good job of doing that. Third down and three. And off, going nowhere, but backwards. Say something now, 6 eight. Calm down. Too much talking and not enough blocking as the Govs come through. And they're going to have to punt the ball, looks like the Trojans. Yeah, it looks like they will go into punt formation. A lot of guys coming off. As the clock continues to tick, as we're going to be under three minutes here, Right now. Probably going to try and chew as much as possible. So William Blunt. So William Blunt has less opportunities to score. They're going to take a timeout. Their yeah. second one, I believe. So they it? might end up going for it on the flip side of this timeout. Is that their first or second? I think it's their first. Oh, is it? it was their second, I believe. I, I it think was. it's their second. No, I think both teams have called and, and Never mind. Yeah, you're right. William Blunt called one. Trinity Chiropractor, we're going to get your life forces open up, open up with Dr. Evan Butcher. Let's uh, take a 30-second break and try to calm down. Need to watch the fake here, does William Blunt, as they did it right around this point earlier in the game. This is going to be a straight kick, though. Good punt, too. And it's going to take a bounce. Oh, and my. And down wow. inside the five and out of bounds. Right at the – they're going Get to say – Get away from it. Get away from it. No, go pick it up. Once they touch it, we can pick it up and go. I think they're going to mark this one at the five. Ended up finishing at the four, but they touched it at the five. So, William Blunt going to have to go 95 yards. So, right there where they touch it right, and don't yeah. stop it, Stan – Randy can, Randy can go and pick it up with no repercussions. Well, there was one repercussions earlier this year. Huh. On that, it gets back at the Morristown game. They got a touchdown on that. 242 left. William Lutt leading by 28. Things really working. I mean, it's working on the ground and in the air, but things really working in the air. Power, Looks like they're going to go power set here. Power set. It's Klein at the back of the eye. Bring Wary in. And off, uh, Klein straight ahead. Not much. 
maybe three. Yeah, I'm left for a little bit of breathing room here, as I would assume William Blount would probably do some substitutions. Now they're going to keep it all. Let's see if we got a final for Maribel. Yep, it's 24 21. Wow. The Rebs kick a field goal at the buzzer. Congratulations to Coach Hunt and his team on getting their seventh win of the year. Referees spotting the ball here. Reset the play clock. Option, Cortez, nowhere. Actually made a couple yards out of it, maybe three. Something out of nothing. Get him up to the 12. Four, actually get four of Cortez. Uh, not hard. Some chippiness again here on the line. Uh, the referees are going to have to get control. They're, yeah, they've not done a very good job of doing that so far. Going to have to do something. Some ejections might, <laughs> might help. Of course, you don't want to see anybody ejected with both teams with pretty big games coming up next week. So fourth or third, excuse me, third down and three right here for the governors. Going to stick with the power formation. And play, handoff, Klein. Gets the first down past the 15 yard line. Yep. And that'll move the chains with this third quarter first down brought to you by the Roll Arena. I fully expect William Blunt to go back into some sort of spread formation, and they will as a mass substitution. They'll bring the big guys out, bring out the speedsters. Three receivers right, one left. Brooks will check out. Klein will be the single set tailback, standing to the right of Cortez. Now two receivers move to the left. We're under a minute to go into third. In motion, Jackson Nebrowski. It'll be a flip to him. Trying to get the edge, he will. And staying outside and getting out of bounds. Stopping the clock. Maybe a yard short. Give him nine. That was a pass. Second down and one. 44 ticks left as the clock stopped as Jackson got out of bounds. Here's play action outside. It's going to be caught by Gavin Dabrowski. And getting close to the 40, it'll be a first down. Roll Arena first down at the 39. I think William Blunt looking to maybe run another play here. Dabrowski hurt his arm. Dabrowski looked a little Dabrowski will check out as the clock is stopped. So he did get out of bounds. Tight receivers, three to the right, one to the left. Cortez, blitz coming. Cortez will take it and got nowhere. Give I believe they're going to give him a yard. One yard. So that'll probably be how this quarter ends. William Blunt will have second and nine at the 40-yard line. See how quickly they go. No reason to run a play unless you just see something you really like. Second and nine, maybe try to draw him here, get a free five. Now it looks like Cortez is gonna take it to the fourth quarter. That'll do it for three quarters of action. William Blunt leads 42-14, we'll take a 60 second break.
another touchdown. Yeah. All right, back here, second and nine. Handoff, Klein running left. Can he get the edge? There's a hold penalty call. It's coming back as the edge. It might have been Lipinski, guys. Is that him? That ain't even Lipinski, is it? I thought Lipinski was in. It's not. I was going to give him a hard time for that tonight. <laughs> But a 10-yard penalty hold. So, Stan, it looks like they switched head referees at halftime. Have you ever seen that? No. Um, something strange down here. But you see a lot of things when you come south. Yeah, uh, yeah, so it, yeah Robbie, it was when we were at Utawal a few years ago, well, about 15 years ago, it was pretty bad, you know, and so, yeah. Well, McMinn County's always bad, obviously. Derek Rain got ejected for some. But... You got to deal with what you can. 10-yard penalty brings up second down and 19. Cortez flips it over to Klein. He had to wait on it. Now he cuts back, cuts it inside. And good vision there and cutting it up there. and brings up a third down and about 12. Oh, look where the spot is. And a great block by Hatcher on this play. He came out with the crack block on the crack toss. He gets tackled around the 38, and this ball is spotted at the 36 and a half. Yeah, not the greatest spot. Try to get a free five here. Nope, straight drop. Rolling to his right. Cortez needs to throw it to somebody. He will cross the middle. Dabrowski, get. There's going to be a face world. mask. We, face got, a, mask. They we got a penalty it. right here. They called it. They called it. Yeah, we got a penalty back here, I think here this too. is probably going to be offsetting, yeah. guys. We got a hold over here on the other side, or in the backfield, oh, in the middle, I should I say. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be ineligible downfield. I thought he said tripping. Yeah, he, he said tripping. Tripping, personal foul, face mask, defense. So they're going to. Oh, they all had the same penalty. What I thought we had ineligible players downfield. Is that not what you thought? Yeah. I don't think the, they uh, did. It looked like the all replay. the offensive linemen were. Watch that replay again. Because the line of scrimmage was at the 30, 38 yard line. No, no, no. Keep watching. Keep watching. And. Okay. No, we're good. Yep, yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. Good job. That's what I thought the penalty was in the middle of the field, but they obviously called the same. They all saw the face mask. I figured, if anything, it might have been a hold where Brett stepped up in the pocket and bought a little more time, but. So that's a. Uh, Murphy Bobcat first down for the Govs here in the fourth. Cortez in the pocket. Needs to get out of it. He will. Somebody come back to him. Now he's going to take off running. And Stiff arms a guy. What is this? Look at this. Hey, what in the there world? it is. What is he doing? He's like kicking, punching him. He's like kicking, punching him in the. I got that. I got that on tape. What in the world? Y'all are dirtier than mud. Y'all should be ashamed. What are we doing? What is he doing? Look at this. Yeah, that'll be 59. <laughs> so 59 will be ejected from this game. <laughs> what? what in the world? And they'll bring in number 58 to replace him, it looks like. Or 68, excuse me. <laughs> I can't. Just calm this call down. Just said they're dirtier than that Yes. That's embarrassing. It's going to be a quarterback run stand. For 13 yards. 13 yards and half the distance to the goal line. And I think an ejection. An ejection if it's not yeah. an ejection, I, I, I'm well, going to be Well, that, that should be an ejection, and he'll probably sit out next week. As, uh, <laughs> that one's not going to be able to be. That one will not be overturned. He, look where he was trying to punch him at, too. Yeah, no way. It was a low shots below the belt. Here's your Zoddy wants roofing to, replay. What's a timeout? All right, he's down. Guy gets on him. Then you go boom, boom, boom. Did you boom. see an injection? Four, 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 four punches. To his All right, we'll step. This is a timeout going to be brought to you by East Tennessee Insurers. We'll take a 60 second break here on the government.
Bruce, Bruce. We're back here. The coaches are meeting here in the middle of the field, and we can only hope that they want to call this game a final at 42 to 14. They got to get well, control. Yeah, of the players. As, as chippy as it's been here over the last quarter and really a half. It looks like that's what they're calling. They're going to say that that'll be the end of the game. As I, I saw the, the white cap make some sort of motion about end of end of a quarter. It looks like they're going they're going to play. Now yeah, they're going to call the game with ten forty to go. Uh, I, mean, that... I can only hope. I got to be at work early. Well, yeah, we can <laughs> hope. So we got a long ride. Yeah, it's all right. All right, it'll be first and 10 just outside the 10-yard line, or is it on the 10? I think it's right on the 10. Okay, so yeah. Nope, no, 11. 11. Okay, so first. First and 10 at the 11. Power formation. Where's Lipinski? Is that Lipinski down yeah. here at the yeah. tight end position? Yeah. Let's see if we get him a ball on first down. See if Coach Claybo can get him a pass. The Polish Nightmare. Daddy just wants his boy to I get know, six. I know his girlfriend's <laughs> back home watching in Poland right now. Yeah, Papa Lipinski here. The... Now they're zoned up. It may not be open. Was... Nope, toss sweep left. It's going to lose yardage. Yep, really good defense there by Saudi Daisy. Read that one like a book. Still the outside. Not much that can happen on a toss sweep there. And now we'll bring out the skill guys. Little speedsters. We'll go skinny again. Bring up second down, and what do we lose? Four. Three four. So second and 14 can get a first down at the one-yard line. Five points away from a school record points in the season. Play at, oh, handoff. Brooks staying inside the tackle, spinning still on his feet yeah. down to the 10. Got the loss yardage back plus one, so they can still get a first down. Need about nine. Great job by Brooks. Turning his legs, breaking a couple tackles, and spinning out of a few to get some positive yardage. Make it third and nine. William Blunt can get a first down inside of the 10 yard line, inside the five, I should say at the one. Three receivers left, 20 on the play clock. One right is Dabrowski. Single set tailback is Darius Brooks. He'll take it, he'll hand to Brooks straight ahead. Brooks is gonna walk into the end Brooks zone down. untouched. And that is a new school record for points in the season by the governor. Keep that clock running. Keep yeah. that clock running, Camo. 48. No, no, not yet, right? 14. In it's, between, yeah, in yeah, between in PAs between. you do. In between PAs, the clock runs. The clock runs. Do you hear him? Uh -huh. I'm ready. All right. They, they run it down there, guys. They run the clock. Uh, high snap. Cortez going to have to do something. He's got a man. Can he throw it? He throw it to the back of the end zone? Oh, Incomplete. man. Just out of reach. 48-14. 32-point lead. We'll take a 60-second break. 9-22 left.
9.22 left here for the Anywhere Movers kickoff. We are in the mercy rule now as the pooch will be taken at the 20 yard line by the Trojans. And oh, boom, big stiff arm. Hit. Dang. He laid the line of William Blunt player still down on the floor. They've got one shaking up too. My goodness. He's woozy. Yeah, let's uh, get him they, on the ground, yeah, guys. Get, it, get him on the ground. That is Schultz, I believe. <laughs> he took Ooh. a clean hit. It's just it's just a big hit. Because they're going to walk him gingerly to the sideline. He might need a, a trip to the to the hospital tomorrow morning for concussion <laughs> protocol. Yeah, all right. That? And that's a good job by the Saudi training staff. And yeah. saw, he saw it immediately. Yeah, get him to the sideline. And he called in for the William Blunt guy to come over and see it. 9-10 left. The clock is not rolling. Don't know why. Probably start it whenever teams get set. No, it starts starts on the kickoff and only stops when there's dead. They're balls. still talking to him again, which I, that was clean. I don't know why he's talking. Yeah, I mean, he, uh, that was. Well, there was nothing wrong with that hit. No, that was clean. As clean as it can get. That was just a pop. Maybe just maybe just trying to re reassure things after the big hit, and I can't blame him for trying to keep control of the game here. They've ran this two-back set all night. Yep, some form of it. Dodd uh, takes it, looking to his left. Straight go route, good coverage. Taco could have come down with that one. Yeah, really good job there by the receiver, staying inside of, of Donley to make sure that he can't come back to the ball and pick it off as he wasn't going to have a chance to catch it. A little too far. So clock still running, eight and a half here remaining in the game. Short, short, short post game report tonight. As we will, we'll name, we won't have no interviews. Uh, I will name our player of the game though, brought to you by Murphy Bobcat. Here's a handoff straight ahead, Welch. And pushing the pile, maybe for a couple. Whistle's blown. Brings up third down. Aiden. Third down and eight. It's going to be dropped. Incomplete. Had the first down, just unable to hold on to it. Looks like Jackson Nebrowski was in there with the pass breakup. Might have got just a paw on it. And the Trojans will punt it away. And I'd expect, I would expect William Blunt to come out with the second team offense, second string offense. Get them a couple reps here going into the Jeff County game as it's the last game of the year. Well, you know. If things end up not ruling in William Blunt's favor with Mo East and Westridge. Davis stands back at his 22. He'll take the snap, he'll punt it away. And Reed should fair catch it. No, he's not. He's just going to take it and go out of the bounds around midfield. So William Blunt. One of their players got hurt down here. I don't know if he was on the sideline or was in the. Yeah, not sure. He's not in the field of play, Number so I assume. Number 14's a receiver. And then he lot. So he might not have been in there. Looks like Dabrowski's going to yep. come in and take the snaps. All reserves in. This clock ticks under six minutes remaining here. Tonight, I'm going to give our players of the game to the linemen, Stan. 
I'm going to go with all five of them. Um, I'm only going to give out two well, T-shirts. We got an injury. I'm only so going to give out two T-shirts, so they'll probably go to the, whoever they whoever fights over them. <laughs> but our Murphy Bobcat players of the game is going to be the line. They kept Brett clean tonight. Made some big holes for Brooks and AK. And pass uh, protected really well and, as well. And, yeah, and kept it really the cleanest of the pockets been all night or all season for Brett. So Murphy Bobcat wants to reward the players who make the extra effort on plays, showing a big difference in good plays and great plays. Tonight, that's going to be the offensive lineman for the Govs, and we'll get them skate pack, party pack from the Roll Arena and a T-shirt, compliments of Murphy Bobcat. I think injured on the play was the sophomore um, Anthony Lott. Yep. Able to get him to the bench with a trainer, so we'll resume play. Clock ticks, under five, handoff straight ahead. Klein's going to get over 100 now, right, Stan? Uh, he needed 19. I don't think he got oh, it. Okay, he got 15 maybe, 14. So he's not quite over 100. Sophomore tailback. Actually got 12, so he's at 93, I believe, yeah, on the night. 93 yards for him. First down, Murphy, Bob, Murphy Bobcat. Take it. He will hand to Klein again, running left. Now he's got the 100 yards. Look at him. He just pushed his face mask hey. down. Try the first is it? It's close. I don't know if he got it or I not. Think uh, I think they're going to say, nine, yeah, nine maybe yeah. half a yard short. We'll give he's nine, right at the marker. The clock ticks under five minutes here. It'll be second and one. Browski in the gun. Quarterback handoff to Klein. Tiptoeing through, getting the first down. Power in his way. Down inside the 25, down to the 24, first down. So we're going to get some mass substitutions out here at wide receiver, getting some guys in that normally don't play all that much. And that'll do it for Aiden Klein tonight. As he'll take out, and I believe... Raymond Jackson, Mike? Yeah. I don't see Raymond, actually. Uh, it looks like 13, guys, I think. Or is it 33? 30 33. 33. Is it? It's hard to tell Yeah, it's Boger. I think it's Boger. Jackson. Oh, ran into Boger. Now running left is Dabrowski. Slides down. Baseball slide by oh Dabrowski. Oh, gosh, that's a terrible spot. I think he spotted it where he ended the slide instead of where he started the slide. A lot of times they just guess. Another substitution out here at wide out. And now is number five. Looks like all reserves when it comes to skill positions. Boger is the tailback. We'll take it. He will hand to Boger. Step tiptoeing through the line. I didn't like that. Got to hit it harder than that. Give him one or two. Oh, it is one three. It's not Nate Bowman. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was Logan 13. Swaney. Swaney's a senior, I believe, isn't he? Nope. I thought he was. Junior. Okay. Well, I think that's his first carry, probably his only carry. Yep. As he goes back out, I believe. Klein yeah. check back in with 3.02 to go. Third down and two. He will hand to Klein, going wow. through five-yard line, down to the three-yard line, yeah. maybe, maybe the four. Yeah, I think they're going to mark him at the four. I don't know how Klein was able to slip through that hole. That's another. Players make plays. Another first down for the Govs brought to you by Murphy Bobcat. That'll be the last first down of the game for William Blunt. Barring something crazy with this running clock. Dabrowski takes the high snap, hands to Klein. He's down at the one. I think they might mark him at the two, Rob. Two? Uh -huh. Give him two. Gonna bring Darius back in, I believe. As they are. Be, oh. Try to get his, it'd be his third touchdown. <laughs> Got yeah. two receivers here. 
Flying in, flying in, Darius in. 140, 20 on the play clock still. Jackson takes it, hands to AK, AK into the end zone. Touchdown, Governors. It's 54 14 now. It's a Red Tech touchdown drive for William Block. Once again, the offensive line with a good push. Yep. Very good. Yep. First bigger dudes that go top two, huh? Snap down, kick up, kick looks good. Kick is, it's 55-14. We'll take a 60 second break. Come back with the conclusion of this game, hopefully. One thirty-four to go. Pooch kick over here to the right. Might go out of bounds. See if they elect to re-kick. Let's hope they don't. Just take it at the 35-yard line and move on. Couple more plays for the Trojans here. Yes. Still see a lot of the starters in. Oh, pretty much the whole starter team. They have a lot of underclassmen, so not a big deal. Why are we stopping the action here? I think they're going to. Oh, so that's got to be their last time out, would it not be? Time out. Well, <laughs> Now he stops it. This time out by Saudi Daisy is going to be brought to you by East Tennessee Insurers, your independent insurance agency. Give them a call. We got 40 seconds left here before we can get out of here. 60 second break.
All right, final 30 se 39 seconds, handoff, running left, turning the corner is a tailback, and getting out of bounds into William Blunt territory at the 35-yard line. Got Welch. Welch with another carry. Eagleton, nice one. One more play here. Handoff. I think that's Ross Tucker. That's and a big hit him. Your final score here from Saudi Daisy High School. William Blunt 55. And Saudi Daisy 14. We'll take a break and come back with stats. Post game show here brought to you by Heartland Roofing. William Blunt comes on the road and gets a big road. 55 to 14 was the road win William Blunt got. 55 14 over Saudi Daisy as they were able to score a lot often, as ended up at 28 7 at the half. And uh, this is Stats with Stan brought to you by Red Tech. Uh, Cortez with three touchdowns in the first half. Brooks with a running touchdown. Also in the second half, Cortez and Klein and Brooks all had rushing touchdowns in the second half for William Blunt. Ross had the seven-yard touchdown for Saudi Daisy, uh, William Blunt at 28-7, and then also Welch with the 15-yard touchdown. Here are the final statistics. And for first downs, William Blunt had 23 the Saudi Daisy 16. On the ground, both teams rushed it 34 times. William Blunt for 241. Saudi Daisy for 140. Completions 12 of 16 through the air for William Blunt for three touchdowns. 
286 yards for Brett Cortez through the air. 11 of 20 for Saudi Daisy with one touchdown. They had 137 yards. Total offense, William Blunt dominated 527 to 277. Penalties, four for William Blunt for 35, 10 for 95 for Saudi Daisy. Both teams had one uh, turnover and punting. Saudi Daisy punted four times for a 36.5 average. William Blunt did not punt tonight. Here are your individual scoring for William Blunt or the individual statistics for William Blunt. On the ground, big night for Aiden Klein, 124 yards and two touchdowns. Brett Cortez had 91 yards and, of course, the one touchdown. Brooks, a couple of uh, uh, touchdowns as well as 17 yards on the ground. Through the air, I gave those. Cortez was 286. And then receiving through the air for William Blunt, uh, 86 for Jackson, Jack Dabrowski. Uh, 99 for Gavin Dabrowski. Uh, Stewart had 68, and Clark had 33. Uh, the touchdowns were to Stewart, and then both Dabrowski through the air as well. So, Saudi Daisy on the ground. Uh, Welch was the big guy, the big carrier, had 128 yards rushing. Uh, nobody else had more than 22 yards um, as Ross had actually 22 yards. Through the air, Saudi threw for about 136. And uh, receiving through the air, it looks like that Ross had 19 yards receiving. Um, also through the air for Saudi. Uh, a couple other guys there getting in as well. York had a couple of catches. And that does it for the... Stats with Stan William Blunt with a big win tonight, 55 14. Robbie, yep. back to you. Yeah, thank you, Stan. Uh, wrapping up some other things um, on the scoreboard Jefferson County, who we play next week, 156 to nothing. Dobbins Bennett, 28 to 7. Uh, our local teams, Eagleton, won 43 nothing. Good win for them. Uh, Maryville beats Alcoa, 24 21. Um, our congratulations to our first to burst uh, winner tonight as Pat Shopshire. Uh, she picked Darius Brooks to be the first one to burst. And then, of course, congratulations to our players of the game, brought to, brought to you by Murphy Bobcat. The We just went with the whole offensive line. Tonight it was William Blunt, 55, and Dirty Daisy, I mean Saudi Daisy, 14. And with that, we'll head it back up north to Blunt County. Thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs>